See the bridge here. The, the bridge is um, uh, 2,000 years old over this river, this ancient city of Ponte de Lima, and it's wonderful racing conditions here today. Uh, we'll see if we can have a, a <coughs> the course on the screen soon. Um, it's a um, interesting course. Stefan, I, mean, I only arrived last night, so coming down to the course this morning is my first view of it. You can see there, we're on the right, down in the tents, light wind, but it's a nice open wide river. This end, I think, gets narrower as we go further down the course, but uh, good op opportunities for athletes who've got left behind to catch up on a river this wide, nothing too technical, and uh, I think we're going to see some very, very good racing today. This morning's the turn of the junior women, both in K1 and C1, as you can see on the graphic there. First off, K1 women juniors, 17 in the field, starting today. High quality field. C C1 women juniors following five minutes uh, later, and that is the first uh, sec sec section of this morning morning racing. Uh, then the uh, prize giving ceremony at uh, 10.30 and in the afternoon, as you can see, the, finaling, uh, the final prize giving ceremony uh, is 1900. But uh, in the afternoon, we will have short races and um, it's short track marathon. It's uh, 3600 meters um, with three portages. Very intense racing. Short track marathon, Stefan. That's a yeah. bit of a contradiction, it surely. Is. It is. Marathon's either short or long, but uh, no, you get all the elements of marathon in there, just in a much shorter, more compressed time frame. Um, hopefully exciting for you, the viewer. If we can explain what's happening to you as you go, hopefully keep you informed and do keep comments coming in on the live feed so that we can tell you what you actually want to know rather than what we think you want to know. So that's us on the island just in front of the start, straight upstream under the new bridge, clockwise turn. A little bit controversial for us old timers, Stefan, a yeah. clockwise turn. Clockwise again, you go into the narrow river, back to the 2000 year old bridge and back to the start here. And there's no uh, portage at the, uh, on the first lap. The portage is coming in from the second lap, the green line here. In for the portage, which is just actually behind us. So we won't be able to see that from commentary. We'll only get the shots we see on screen. And then back to the finish. And obviously the number of laps changes according to which class we're in. And there's the view. That's directly in front of us. We can just see the start pontoon to our right. So it's a 19K race. You can see us, we're on, we're on Love Island there, Stefan, right yeah. now. Just off, off the bridge. Indeed. Couldn't be better. There are our guards, they're guarding the podium. And they have been guarding this uh, podium and this bridge for 2,000 years, this Roman centuria. <coughs> Obviously a lot of history in the town and we'll try and get you up to speed with that over the four days. Don't want to drench you in history on day one, but the bridge is 2,000 years old. It's still in use still in use and I believe when they opened it and it was actually Jesus that cut the ribbon mm -hmm. to open the bridge Stefan that's what I've heard I'm not sure if that's true or not but uh, so there's the start list the outstanding one 54 from Hungary Victoria Nagy already multiple medalist at European and world level um, she has to be the one to watch Amber Yanis there presumably the daughter of Bruno or Werner Stefan yeah parking back to the old days there um, actually, it was Bruno and Yanis' birthday yesterday. 
I saw that on Facebook. That's the beauty of Facebook. I, I'm well informed. 62, you have to take into account second Hungarian, Dorina Fichetti there. But Florence Duffield, Chelmsford Canoe Club in Great Britain, I'm going to put her in with a chance because she raced so well last year at the European Championships. And then um, second from bottom there, Anita Konichna, possibly as well. So there's your European champion, Victoria Nagy. It's hard to look past her for a win here today, but didn't win in Brandenburg, as you can see. And then bottom end of the, is that the, that's the C1 there. Again, Hungarians, Portuguese, always quite up there contending in the canoe classes, as is Spain. So all the big players in there, Ukraine, France. French won the first European C1 Junior Marathon back in Bohine a couple of years ago. So yeah, there's confirmation that the Hungarians are pretty good at this too. World champion and European champion. And here we go, junior women on the start line. And away they go. All fairly evenly matched across the, across the line there. But it's Duffield leading out. Looking very comfortable on that to her left from Portugal. So it's Duffield in the stripy boat. Next to her, number 62 is Dorina Fichetti from Hungary. She's just going up um, Duffield's right-hand side. 59 to this side is Milova from Czech Republic. And on the outside, Italia, Italy, um, Bianca Canemola in the blue boat and blue dress. So you've got to look at Canemola there, thinking she hasn't really got a plan. She needs to get into Duffield's side. You don't really want to go side by side. There she is. Italian who was going side by side has now dropped back to what's going to end up the second wash and as the Hungarian Fichetti takes up the lead there. Pretty tidy breakaway until the background there we've got a bit of a collision somebody caught the tail end of somebody else's boat there you can see the Spaniards in the water can't see the number but we'll give you a clue on that later so we're guilty of missing the first bit of excitement in the commentary box already it's number 57 which is Nora Ray, one of the contenders. So she's out of it for now. It'll be a big ask to catch up from there. It's a long swim to either bank, as you can see. She's going to try and get in her boat. There we go, head on shot. Italy, Spain in the background, Belgium. That's Amber Yanis there. But it's Hungary from Great Britain, from Spain. Italy on the outside, tucked nicely in. Behind the lead Hungarian is number 38. That's uh, Victoria Nagy. She's my favorite for a win. But you can see the group formation there. A lot of unused good washes there. There's a beautiful wash. Two V-washes being unused, and that's just a little bit of education maybe for these girls. Some people don't like sitting in the V behind, but there's two very, very nice washes there. But hopefully, somebody will use at some stage. Now they're starting to get organized as they come round the turn. Italian on the inside been squeezed out. Hungarians forcing the pace a little bit. Leaving comfortable amount of room for the other competitors. It's nice and clean around the turn. Just stringing the group out. And Hungarians always prepared to turn on the pace. But it looks like it could easily break to four here. Be a very handy break for Great Britain. He's found, for Duffield's found herself tucked in at the back of the group. And that could be 
it's hard to say decisive at this end of the race, but uh, so there's still five. It's five in there, not four. You've got the two Hungarians. You've got Duffield from Great Britain. You've got Andrea Azevedo from Spain. And then somebody just out of sight is clinging on to that group of four. Second group in a little bit of disarray. They need to group up a little bit if they're going to make an impact. So the, the fifth athlete in that is boat 56. That's Italy, Teresa Isotta. You can see how comfortable Victoria Nagy is, boat 54 there. Low arms, low shoulders. Really very unstressed. Second group, maybe making a little bit of ground on them for now. Somebody on the left of that second group putting in the effort to close the gap. Got those front four looking pretty comfortable. Is Otto there hanging on to that group? Doesn't look like the others quite made contact. And off the start line go the C1s. One three one, Honcharova from Ukraine. Next to her from France, Matilda Tronsan, Maya Zadek, Dorina Koskar, Beatrice Barros, Rita Nascimento, and Andrea Vasquez. On your far side there from Spain. So it looks like Spain. One three seven, that's Vasquez taking it out here as the group of five come across the front and in the women's K1 junior women's K1 that's changing a little bit it looks like Isotta has made the break into the front four and it's the Spaniard who's suffering she's just dangling off the back of the group there and the gap is opening to the second group they really don't look like they've got the power to close the gap so it's already formed Front group of five, second group of three, possibly four. And meanwhile, the C1s come past us. Vasquez still taking it out there. And the blue boat from Hungary, she's making her way across now to Vasquez. So Vasquez, top of the picture. Then Hungary is going to be Kolskar, Darina Kolskar in the blue boat. I think she probably is going to close that gap. Much harder to ride the washes in the canoes. Boats are much more affected by the waves. No rudder, of course. So one boat out on her own. Vasquez looking comfortable. I'm far from qualified to talk about canoe technique, but that looks pretty good to me. It's efficient. Boat's moving well. So women's kayaks have gone down through the bridge there. And they're going heading down to the bottom turn. It's a little bit tighter on the river back there. That scares. Still going well, making their way up to the top turn. That gap hasn't changed much, so I think it will close at some stage. They, I think they're just approaching the turn now, so they will end up moving across and behind Vasquez, make their way under the bridge and around the turn. That's Hungary and Poland. Oh, the Hungarian. Something's happened to the Hungarian there. I think two lead athletes have gone to the right of the bridge pillar, which might not. Hungarians obviously decided that won't get around the turn, and it won't. So the Spaniard's gone inside the bridge arch, missed the first boy of the turn. That'll be a time penalty at least. Don't think it'll be a disqualification. The Hungarian was awake enough to see that. 
because Spaniard is going to know what she's doing. So the Hungarian and the pole, the pole has also gone, well you can see the pole at the back of the group now, she was in third place, I think she has come around and done all the boys. got to feel slightly foolish doing that now, Stefan. I mean, they've been here all week, right? They've been paddling around the course all week. The bridge has been there. That one hasn't been there for 2,000 years, but it's been there plenty long enough to know what's happening up there. That's... Somewhere there's a coach, Stefan, tearing his hair out in the tent back here. So that kind of threw a bit of a bomb into the field there, really. So. That race is going to pan out very differently to how it was initially planned, I think. And we know that there's some faster people at the back of that field, so we could see a lot of changes. So Vasquez on the right there, apart from that initial bit we just saw, she took the lead all the way to the turn, made a proper pig's ear of the turn, and is now at the back of the field again. Her compatriot obviously knew she was going to start well. Oh no, that's the Portuguese, sorry, 135. So there's the race as it is live now. And I think we're looking at France there, from Portugal, from Hungary. We'll try and get you those numbers and names. So France would be Matilda Tronsan. French have been very successful in the women's canoe marathon right from when it was introduced back in Bohine. And France uh, was the dominating country in the First World Cup. Yeah, and and in Belgium. Across yeah. the board. Yeah. Yeah. The, the men were well. The men won. Yeah. And, and they were all right up the top end of the yeah. field. And it wasn't a weak field either. There were some big players. And big improvements since last yeah. year. Do you think that's down to um, uh, Pascal? I think so, yeah. So Pascal Boucheret, one of their well, superheroes from yeah. France's canoe past, 10Ks especially, and he came in to this side of the sport two or three years ago, and the French have just come up and up mm. since. They're doing a great job coaching, and they have a great program. But the most important, I think, is to encourage the the athletes and he's doing that as well. Uh, I think if you're led by someone with that sort of yeah. character, you you almost feel obliged to perform yeah. well. And Positive coaching. Yeah. It becomes natural to to, yeah. uh, to be good. It, I think you perform to expectation, and I think yes. someone like Pascal would have a huge expectation of his athletes, based on the fact that he never lost. So why should they? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's really sad to see this. Someone emptying their boat out. This was the swimmer early days. Such things happen, but it's yeah. a long race, so it's not a catastrophe. But you might see it as not a catastrophe, Steph, and I'm thinking she's seen it very differently. Yeah. I know I would be seeing it very differently if that was me. I would be hating life right now much as it you could take it on as a challenge it's a challenge I'd rather not take on yeah. so canoes so the, certain things happen and you need to face facts and just do what you need to do Th there's a time isn't there where your brain has to readjust to that and yeah. it can take a few minutes yeah. and it's uh, I mean, the worst we I ever had was in the first world championships in Nottingham when we sank on the first leg and we got to the first quarter eight minutes behind the leaders and everything in me wanted to give up I told my support crew I wanted to give up. They told me I couldn't, apparently. And uh, it's that mental readjustment. But once you've made the readjustment, it just becomes a different job. Yes. So here we go then. So there's the canoes. So we've got France from Portugal, from Hungary, from Ukraine. And then that was the second Portuguese at the back, but still five in the front group. Junior women's Hungary, uh, Hungary. So you've got Nagy in the green boat. We've got uh, Fichetti in the black boat. We've got Duffield in the stripy boat from Great Britain. 
we've got uh, Isotta, white boat, blue shirt from Italy, and it looks like that group might have just been reduced to four. Very convincingly by Pichetti. She was doing the work early on. Looks like she's doing the damage now. And it's very hard with camera angles to see the distance between those people, but that looks like very much like a Hungary 1-2 and that gap is growing and growing. It's not what those other girls want to see. There it is, it's a good four lengths there, five lengths maybe. Italian looking round, she's not planning on uh, doing the work to catch up. So, how many times have we seen this, Stefan? Too many times. Yes. I'm not bored with it, <laughs> but yeah, what can what can the other countries do to match that? You know, you've got two girls there who are better than anyone from any of the other countries. So several at, more at all. At, I was going to say at home they might have yeah. another one to fit, fill that gap, yeah. and maybe two or three more. It's it's a great channel in country Hungary. Many good clubs. Canoeing is so popular there. It becomes natural to just be there in the top of the world. For them. Nice tidy wash hanging group there. That's the third group back essentially, but it really well, a bit of a difference of opinion and where to go here. It could be the Hungarians are making a mistake, or it could be that Duffield's making a mistake. But I think the flow of the river is very low. So, hardly none. So that's number 67. That's uh, Natalie Pavlicen from Croatia. And I'm really hoping that Florence Duffield has made a superb move here and that it's going to come good for her. So they're coming up through the bridge, which is just to our right. We can't see them because there's a wall in our commentary booth. So I can only see them on screen. So I can't see what's happening with the other two who are out of shot, but it looks like the rest of the field are following the two rather than the Hungarians. So uh, taking different uh, sides of the pontoon when they pass the start pontoon now. The Hungarians so on the inner side here. So Duffield and Isotta. It's a brave move. You've got to applaud them for that. Maybe it will come right for them. Uh, Hungarians have already passed the, the pontoon on this uh, left-hand side, and it's an um, uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise turn. I think they will have uh, an advantage. Size will lead by side. the time they get there. Yeah. Yep. And they're traveling well. Yeah, they're working together. Typically, we see the Hungarians work together for the first few laps, and then their personal battle starts to kick in. Two laps to go before the finish. There's Nagy, European champion, just communicating with Piketty. Working out who's going to do what. They'll work hard for a while, get the lead they're happy with, and then have a little rest up before the personal battles to follow. So it's Duffield and Isotta fall into line behind them. They definitely gained through that. So I'm going to big up for Florence Duffield there. She did exactly the right thing. They've almost made contact and that is awesome. I really hope they can finish the job there. But for two lengths, they did it. They've just got to close that gap. Duffield's getting no help at all from the Italian. But it looks to me like they're going to do it. They are going to close that gap. Oh, maybe they're not. It's so difficult with the camera angles. And that is tantalizingly close. 
you almost wonder if they came across too soon in the end they could have stayed right for longer so okay she's done all that closing up and then uh, overtakes on the wrong side of the group when she gets there but that is amazing work from Florence Duffield I hope the teammates back in Chelmsford are watching that It's the second group, which is two Portuguese athletes. So that's Fernandez and Azevedo. Oh, and the speed's picked up at the front. This is it. This is why you didn't want to come up on the right-hand side of that group. You should have come up the left. Now it's going to get a bit tight. They're going to go around the turn now. And really, oh, it's painful to watch. The gap's opened up again. For all that work, all you had to do was come up the left-hand side of that group instead of the right. You'd had a bit of safety net. But after making a fantastic decision on which course to take. It's also very well done from the Hungarians. They know they use the, the, uh, their position excellently. It's a great Britain support, Stefan. That's a bit painful to watch. Sure. That's such a great effort and great clarity of thought to do what she did there and then just chose the wrong side at the last minute. And the Hungarians saw that and they increased the speed. Made a good effort. So we learn working well together now, you can see that. Shifting positions, doing 100 meters each. The problem for, for Duffield is she's getting no help at all from his otter, the Italian there. So she's on her own essentially. And these two are more than happy to share the lead. Just open up the gap a little bit. there is Fernandez 53 is uh, Hans Sorensen from Denmark oh, great. that's the group just at the top of your shot there so the front two away and clear behind them Great Britain Italy it's Hungary Hungary Great Britain Italy opened up so so quickly it's going to be a long long haul for Duffield there she's going to get no help Italian more than content just to use her Back under the bridge, and it looks like Duffield and 
His otter are going to be caught by the following group, which is, I think, Denmark and the two Portuguese. Meanwhile, at the front of the women's canoe, it's France. They're just coming to the end of their first lap. So Tronsan from France appears at least from the shots we're seeing to be comfortably ahead. Behind her is Portugal. And Poland. So Polish. Zadek was one of the two who messed up the top turn. So she's done well to be where she is. But just across in front of commentary comes Tronsan and she is looking very strong indeed. And the others have yet to, well they're just coming under the bridge now. So that gap has to be a minute maybe. There you can see the gap. And that looks pretty impressive for France there. Matilda Tronsan. Front of commentary now, just crossing the what will be the finish line is Jadek and first Portuguese now just behind them got Ukraine, Spain and the Hungarian. We're not going to see a Hungarian win in this event today. So 135, that's Beatrice Barros. Barros, a familiar name in canoe paddling in Portugal. Wash hanging, not a big thing, it seems, in uh, canoes, Stefan, from that picture we saw there. They're all over the river. And there, there's confirmation on screen now. Two Hungarians away and clear. And they just continue to work well together. Yeah, the second two have been swallowed up by the third group now. Third group of about five or six. We'll give you those names and numbers when we get them. But for now, it's Hungary and, surprisingly, Hungary. Nagy, Victoria Nagy, um, fourth number 54, she won already last year. This youngster from uh, Hungary. Winning a junior ch international championships as a first year junior is quite unusual. Yeah, and then come the world championships. Yeah. Another girl from yeah. Hungary won. Yeah. So there are just you know, a, a store back there of them. Two, two here. I don't think, I certainly haven't seen uh, Darina Facchetti in the black boat before. There's Duffield now being asked to lead the next group of five. That camera shot doesn't look like that group of five is too far behind the Hungarians. I think it is a little bit longer than that in reality. 
But in that group of five, Stefan, do you, you settle for racing for third or do you, are you still motivated to catch up? What do you what do? You do? do you try and organise the group and get close that gap? I think you could do it from there. Yeah, it's not it's not that big. What we, you're still under a minute there. But it's just Duffield leading, leading, leading. So there's the group of five. You can see the leaders. Leaders are putting on a lot of speed at the front there now. They're just maybe going around the turn. They saw the gap wasn't what they would hope it would be. And Fichetti is properly motivated there to stretch that gap again. No one helping Duffield in Group 2. Look at this speed. Yeah, she's, they look back on the turn, or yeah. well, you don't even have to look back on the turn, do you? It's, it's the one opportunity you get to see what damage you've done. And has obviously decided she hasn't done enough. Yeah, so eager, these two now, to... Uh, Really increase the gap and secure gold and yeah, silver yes, to Hungary. So Fichetti, she's done her what, one minute's hard work there. She will have gained another three or four lengths on the group behind. It doesn't look like Nagy is keen to do the same. So Fichetti's the one doing the damage for now. There's the second group in shot. Be interesting to see what route the Hungarians take this time round. So Victoria Nagy to the left there, European champion from last year in Spain, Pontevedra. Uh, it looks like she's going to have a work cut out today. Fichetti. Yeah, quick, uh, quick apology to everyone back home. Of course, Flo Duffield is from Norwich. That's my mistake. Schoolboy error there. Too excited in the commentary box. So I'll take the slap on the wrist for that from back home. The Norwich, of course, one of the other big producers of paddlers. We've got Tim Pendle racing later in the senior men's. Dyson Pendle here as coach. Drink strung round her neck there. Taking a sip of that. Seems that second group were just so happy to let her leave, but for now, hungry, hungry. Oh, still comfortably ahead. A little bit of challenge in for washes in that second group. So Danish athlete in the white shirt. It's hard to see who's leading, but Duffield could drop behind the Portuguese and just have a, look, have a little rest. Just drop in, drop into the V and right, there we go. That's finally settled itself as we go back to the Hungarians. So Nagy 
taking her turn at the front. Nice shot through the bridge there. So the gap is about, I'm going to say, 30 seconds. And finally, this group's got itself organised. And the chase is on. So it looks like the average speed of the Hungarians isn't any better than the rest of the field. But certainly top speed is. There goes Nagy, she's going to do a bit more damage as they come into the portage for the first time. That's a really nice little portage, nice sandy beach to get up. Forgetti, maybe not so proficient on the portaging as she is on the water. Second group coming in. It's Portugal, from Denmark, from Great Britain. All out fairly cleanly. Aggie's going to get in with about a three, four length lead. One foot in. Nice and tidy. You see about 20 seconds back to the second group. Got slow in from Fichetti, and there's the evidence of that. You've got Portugal coming in, 59, that's Fernandez. You've got Fernandez, Duffield, very cautious getting in. She needs to get away quickly to join the group. Second Portuguese, 63, that's Azevedo, and it's game on. There's the leader, Nagy. Tidy across the portage, no risk taken. And away clean. Fichetti, not so clever. How you lose six, seven lengths in a 50 meter portage is a little bit of a mystery. You can see how important it is just to be tidy, just to be clean. You don't need to win anything, you just need to stay with the group you came in with. Fichetti failed to do that and is now the target for second group that's disintegrated slightly but you can see Fichetti awesome speed she's going to close down the leader and the second group again there's just not enough power in that second group to get so so close to being in contact and they just can't match the high speed that the Hungarians can produce when they need it so it's going to be a group of two shortly after the turn, probably. Followed by three. The three is Denmark on the right, Portugal in the middle, and Great Britain on the left. So Nagy, European champion. Turn of form for Ketty. It's been an expensive, messy portage for her. And here's the second group. Last wave is always the hardest one to climb over. Fugetti just going uphill for the last time before she drops down onto the tail wash of Nagy. And they'll be together just after the turn. Still hasn't made it over that last last wave. So in the big picture, nothing really changed over that portage, but it has for Fichetti. She's just done about three, four minutes of very, very hard work. It would have been unnecessary had she not messed up. Second group changed from uh, six boats to three. group need to either choose to work together or start fighting for third early days still meanwhile 
down at the bottom turn there. It's Tronsan from France. Looking back down the course, it was Poland. Seemed to be the next boat, a Jadek, Maya Jadek from Poland. In second place on her own. And it looks like Spaniard has made her way through the field. I think the pole is about on the turn somewhere. And then it looks like Vasquez. After a hideous error on the first turn, it's going to be in third position. So that's Vasquez there. thing having to catch up after an accident or an incident but to have to catch up after you've made a hideous mistake all under your own steam is very very tough but it looks like she's closing down Portuguese Jadek so it's France from not Portuguese Polish sorry so it's France from Poland from Spain Looks like Spain will catch Poland at some stage. And it's quite tight out from that turn by the look of it. You come out around the turn, immediately into a left-hand bend. Tough in the canoes because of the lack of rudders, but it will be tough in the bigger races later on in the weekend if you have big groups going around there. So that's Jadek from Poland, currently lying second, but being hunted down by the Spaniard. The background there in Hungarian terms a pretty poor showing from Darina Koskar. And then Ukraine in the blue vest and Portugal in the yellow boat. They've been overtaken by Vasquez so that gap isn't closing. Sharp end. It's Tronsan. As we watch Tronsan on screen across the front of us, the second group in the women's K1 is now up to five athletes again. That's regrouped after the portage. So is one of our camera in. Stefan, 15 cameras or something, we're told, on this course. It is. We've got, in the background, we've got two of those giant TV lorries fully loaded with kit. I've never seen anything like it. It's a bit like a space station to me. It's amazing. Yeah, the, the effort and I know the quality of the production here is going to be one of the best. I mean, we, we've, we've suddenly become the weak link in the whole process. So I'm feeling very vulnerable this weekend. I've already made a couple of mistakes and uh, no, fully professional outfit we've got here. It's the best we've had since we've been doing the job. Absolutely. As it should be in international events nowadays. Cameraman on the little raft there, we can see in shot. He probably said something bad to somebody last week or something. He got the raft job. <laughs> He's going to be out there. Looks like it might rain later. So second place at the moment, Maya Jadek. That's what she can see in front of her. And that is what's coming up behind her, Andrea Vasquez. Mm. 
So clouds are coming over here, Ponte de Lima. It's a little bit chilly out there. Wind's picking up a little bit, but not too much. Not enough to disturb anything, that's for sure. She comes in to her first portage. Up now. Much easier to drag these boats, or much less risky at least, seeing as there's no rudder. Pretty much just drag them along. Running reasonably well. She's not under any stress at all. It's always pretty hard running in the sand once you've got a bit tired. It's not the best medium for running on. When you get in, put in, back on the knee block, and off you go. No mess, no fuss. Simple as. Oh, not sure what that was about. Looks like she's having a bit of a moment. Just coming under the bridge. Second place, Maya Zedek. So, as Tronsan left the porters there, she looked like she was having a little bit either a cough, coughing fit or maybe even a bit of throwing up. We'll see how she looks next time we see her. So Jedex taking the shoulder route with her boat. Seems a little bit unnecessary on a portage like this. Dragging it with is a lot less hassle. It's always confusion with your paddle when you have to carry it on your shoulder. And she's been stopped for a time penalty. So that's going to be from the first turn, presumably. Because it was her and the Spaniard who messed up. So she's got 15 seconds. Off she goes. That'll play beautifully out for the Spaniard. Also carrying on her shoulder. Brutal 15 seconds. Spaniard now right behind her, Vasquez. She'll be inspired by that. So one, a minute and a half lead, and there, that gap still hasn't absolutely broken yet between the Hungarians and the group of five behind is still hanging around that sort of 30 seconds mark for Ketty trying to do the damage again but you can see that gap isn't it's not terminal that's for sure so they've done 15k or 15 and a half Oh no, sorry, that's the, uh, that, sorry, I was reading the graphic there. So the junior K1 women have got a 19K race. Uh, the C1's 15 and a half. So group of five, messy group of five. Just dangling off the back. There is Azevedo from Portugal. There's the leaders. 
Duffield again doing the work in the second group. Hungarians just speeding up there. That gap is shrinking all the time. So, if, they, if the same happens on this portage as the last one, Fichetti's going to struggle to hold that second group off, I think. Could have just started raining out there. So it's, it's raining in the shot we're seeing on screen, which is just below the bridge, and in front of us it's not raining yet. So to Victoria Nagy trying to maintain the gap between the lead pair and the chasing group. Racing group now being led by Portugal. It's Fernandez. It's Fernandez from Duffield, from Sorensen, and at the back of the group there is Azevedo, and tucked in neatly in the V is Isotta from Italy. Who's either racing lazy today because you haven't seen her at the front at all or she's just clinging on for survival you only find that out at the end but here come the hungarians gap is still 30 seconds or less just to look over her shoulder at Duffield there just checking out to see where everyone is what sort of shape everyone else is in who your help's going to come from and who you need to watch out for in terms of doing damage later on it's very important when you're working in a group like that, that you understand how the other people feel what they're capable of where they can help you and where they can hurt you The Hungarians approach the bridge. That's still about 30 seconds. It's uh, Azevedo. He's taking the strain there. Just falling further behind that second group. Could possibly be saved by the portage. If there's a straggler. But here come the Hungarians. Ketty. She knows she suffered after the first portage. They're coming in together. It's Nagy out first and comfortable for Ketty. has got a boat full of water. She's making a, another. She's going to be caught, I think. She emptied about half her water out there. If you're going to do it, do it properly. Get all the water out. But she's still got some left in there. So Nagy, again, is going to gain about five, six lengths. Second group. Sensing an opportunity. They're running well, but it's Nagy. <coughs> In and away. There's Fichetti. She's been caught by the second group. And if one person, just one, can get away with it, but no, they're not going to make it. There's such an opportunity there. If you can just get an overlap on Fichetti, you get a ride back to the leader. And it's strung out. See the raindrops on the camera lens now. 
A little bit of rain out there. There's Fichetti. On the water, so dominant. On the portages, not so. She'll catch up again, I think. But this second group was so, so close to getting that overlap there. Just wasn't to be. And they're tired now. In that second group, they had their little little flurry. They had overlap on Fichetti as they put the boats in. Nobody managed to leave with her, and that gap is opening up with an air of inevitability. It's going to be the same process for the next lap. Beautiful technique there. Using her legs very strongly. It looks so easy when these girls are paddling. It does. You can be sure they're putting in a bit of effort, though. I Absolutely. Think. But it's smooth and relaxed. They are done many kilometers from the rivers back home to be able to, to paddle this fast and so relaxed. So, second group essentially made no progress over that portage after all the excitement. They're back together as a group of four. Definitely now, Azevedo's lost touch with that group of four. It's going to take Fichetti slightly longer to close down. Nagy this time, Nagy will get around the turn clean, I think. And it'll be back, should be caught as they come back past us, back at the old bridge. You saw Paquetti there approach the portage. She was first into it. She must have known she had water in her boat, so maybe her pump's not working, or maybe she's just not been using it. Got out of the portage. All the water went to the front of her boat. She couldn't run. Rushed to empty it and only emptied half of it. And now it's a long, long chase just to get back to where you were before you made that mistake. So it's a learning curve. I guess that's what junior racing is about, though, Stefan. It, is, it the, is. is the learning curve before you end up battling against the old timers who don't make those sort of mistakes. But in fact, uh, a couple of these girls uh, participated already last year, as you said. Forget them. Uh, one. Um, Already last year, and uh, Nora Ray from Spain at the bronze uh, 2016. Also, Christina Delor from uh, Germany uh, were sixth last year and fourth in the World Cup previously uh, this year in Belgium. Well, th those girls have made no impact on this. Where, where is the Spaniard yeah. in this today? She's, yes. not, she's not in the running at all. So it's pretty bleak outside now. It's raining fairly heavily here. But it's still good conditions for the paddlers. Rain doesn't affect much. I'm more worried about us, Stefan, than the paddlers and the spectators. Paddlers, they're always OK. So you can see K1's just catching up the tail end of the C1s. And that's the chase group. So 59 there is Fernandez from Portugal. Looking to be maybe the strength in that group now. Duffield tired from the first couple of laps where she had to do everything. Fichetti just made contact now with Nagy. You can see that that's taken something out of her. She's just coming up to the side wash now. And Nagy, having made her work for all that, is now going to make her lead. And that's Nagy's privilege, to be fair. She's in charge of the race at the moment. So Nagy would have squeezed on the pressure just a little bit to make Fichetti's job a little bit harder. 
having squeezed on just that little bit has earned herself a rest. And they're just coming across the front of our tent now. They're coming back towards the old bridge. I don't know about you, Stefan, I've totally lost a uh, count of laps, but we've got Jim right next to us in the live commentary booth, and we're going to refer to Jim's greater knowledge for our number of laps. Oh, and he, he's Jim, Jim, Jim Rossiter. Jim Rossiter, a man that the whole of the sport looks up to, has now gone... <laughs> he's refusing to give us information, refusing to share information that we know he has. <laughs> right, he's sharing now. So they're on their fourth lap now of five. Just as I thought. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> so we rely heavily on Jim. Oh, we've got another Roman soldier in the background there on a horse. Look at that. There's Romans everywhere in this place. It they? is, it is. You can tell it's a good place, because if you haven't left after 2,000 years, you know there's enough going on here to keep you interested. The oldest village in uh, Portugal, apparently. It is. And I'm guessing that that big bull is also not real. Very placid if it is real. So two Hungarians still making the run-in. And the second group, they're just having a little bit of a chat there. Any Hungarian lip readers in the audience? You might want to translate for us. Gaps expanded, probably 45 seconds. Hopefully later in the weekend we'll get all the time split software up and running. So fairly heavy rain out there. So there you go, great shot. You've got the leaders of the K1, the leaders of the C1. One less lap for the C1s. So still comfortably out in front in the C1 race is Tronsan from France. So that'll be Tron Sang coming up for the second portage of three. In the background there, in a little bit of soft focus is the Hungarian. It looks like it's still Port, uh, Poland rather in second place with Zadek. From the last, that is Ukraine back on the turn. in Bohin last year in uh, Pontevedra and now here in Ponte de Lima in Portugal the leaders in the K1 just in the background there they're coming around for their third portage of four and I imagine by now Fichetti is not looking forward to the portages it's very hard to see with the final portage being so close to the finish, how Fichetti can even get near Nagy on that last lap. Unless she's on a steep learning curve and gets it right on the fourth go. 
Picking up the speed again. A little bit of speed changeover. Glance back to see where the others are and doesn't seem very concerned. So I'm guessing that gap is still about 45 seconds. So, Stefan, would you rather be uh, in the commentary box here in the shelter or out on one of the boats being a marshal on the course today? <laughs> it's raining. Duffield there leading the chase pack again from Fernandez, from um, Isotta, and in the back there, number 53, Sorensen from Denmark. The Danes had a, a really strong team again in uh, Mechelen earlier this year. Yes, and, and also in Hasselink in the World Cup, kind of Marathon World Cup. That's what I meant. Maybe in, I yeah. called it Mechelen. Yeah, 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 sure. Sorry. Sure. But yeah, they, they had yeah. Um, the, their women's team was a, a, yes. a strong, strong yeah. team. So what's the gap looks bigger now. That's that's going to be close to a minute. A little bit, bit more relaxation time for the Hungarians, and it's Duffield leading into the turn. Is Otter on her right hand side? Fernandez pushing up on the outside. Not really sure why, but. It's doing some damage to the ones behind them. So it's Sorensen. Just dangling off the group there. Duffield and Fernandez down comfortably. He's got her just staying in touch. And Sorensen's got a little bit of work to do. Join that group again. Just two or three lengths. Could be fairly straightforward, and when she gets back, get the re reward of the the V wash. A bit of a smile for the camera there from uh, Nagy. But not looking too stressed. He feels like she's done enough. And Maggie happily takes over the lead. So she's asked just she's just done a portage there on her own out the front. Tronsan from France. She's only got one. go and in second place there Poland so she's maintained her lead over Vasquez which seemed unlikely at one point especially after she took her time penalty not picking up a drink on this lap in order to pick up drink you have to go to the right of the barrier down the middle. It's quite a long run round. It is. The drinks on this one. Yes. But everyone, you can't really do a marathon without a drink. So some uh, athletes are carrying the drinks, uh, all the, the drinks they need on their backs. Not these ones. Uh, to avoid the longer run at the portage. And to be fair, this is only 15 and a half k. Yeah. So, um, you probably could do that yeah. without a drink yeah. quite comfortably. Yeah. 
So two minutes behind Tronsin of France. And you can see just behind Chadek, just getting in her boat. Oh, she's about to put a boat in the water. Now it's Vasquez. And it's these three, but the first three comfortably ahead. Second place, junior women C1. Two minutes behind the leader there in France. And just a few seconds ahead of Vasquez in shot there. Vasquez, whose race could have turned out so differently had it not been for an error on the first turn. For their third portage of four, and again, still got too much water in a boat. All the water's down the back now. Probably emptied two thirds of it, and again, every single time. This will be a hard, hard one for her to close now. It's going to be tough. In gets Nagy, away, comfortable and clear. A little bit shallow, a bit of encouragement from the coach. And he's going to be telling her, now's the chance. Go now. In gets uh, Paquetti, and she is looking at a decent sized gap this time. It's going to take her at least Until she gets to us. Here's the second group. I feel a little bit slow into a boat there. It's going to get away. It's only three left in that group. Somewhere we're missing the Italian. Here she is now. But not a great portage from her. I'm guessing they all came in together. But now out on her own and working hard is Victoria Nagy. Gap back to Paketti is maybe 20, 30 meters. Working hard. She's done this twice already, and now she's doing it for a third time. This time. It's going to be the most painful of the three so far. In the background, it's Isotta from Italy, furthest down that train. And she's got to try and close up these three, Fernandez, Duffield and Sorensen. is slightly less motivated this time to allow for Ketty to close her down. That gap's staying a lot more consistent than it has on the previous two laps. When for Ketty closed stroke by stroke, this time it's game on. For Ketty with a slightly higher stroke rate, working slightly harder. 
but that gap still 30 meters probably more so that's not going to be closed until they come at least back past us and I think maybe even more especially with those those two canoes will be between them at some point Maggie will be away and clear Fiketti will have waves to climb over Here we are, back to the canoe race. Second place, Jadek. Is off to there, she's keeping that gap maintained on the group of three in front of her. For now, it's the first time we've seen Nagy prepared to run previous two laps she's just squeezed Fiketti into trying hard to catch her up knowing that she would and this time I think she's actually laying down a challenge you can see the gap there you got Nagy first one two C1s then Fiketti the gap still 30 meters Nagy going so far there with every stroke. Efficient, tidy. Piketty will be cursing the C1s at this stage. Rain's hammering down out there now. Piketty just dealing with the last of the C1s. Being squeezed quite close to the bank there and Nagy only looking forward she hasn't had a single glance back yet that we've seen so we know where our concentrations going they've got one more portage to do if you want an easy life though and you're Nagy why don't you just come into the last portage with Fichetti? She's going to mess it up anyway. Yeah. So you've got a whole lap of working hard here. And maybe you don't even need it. I think she's feeling strong and just go for it now. C1, Andrea Vasquez. Life could have been so different for her. The overhead shot of the C1, they get, do get a full view of how narrow those things are. Nagy is being closed down by Fichetti. Gap's now about 20 metres. They are both going very, very hard now. You can see that. Nagy is not, not in any uh, danger of being closed down anything for free, but Fakirti is uh, doing all she can now to close that gap. Going very, very hard. Fairly plain sailing out the front of the canoe. Oh, oh, just as I said that. It looked like it was either a little bit shallow there or maybe a bit of weed in the water that caught the paddle. So, in the background, you can see Fichetti just closing down the last two or three lengths on Nagy. Nagy's, you just saw Nagy asked her to take the lead. I think she's caught her and there's a bit of a shake of the head from Fichetti there. Who I think was saying no. 
not going to take the lead this time. You do it. First third place in the women's junior canoe and first two in the kayaks. It's been tough, a tough catch for Fichetti. She wasn't going straight through. Screen now. It's Tronsant from France just making her way down to a final bottom turn. Untroubled. Pretty much from the first lap after the Spaniard messed up the turn. Tronsant's been at the front of this, huddled away from the Portuguese, and has been on her own for the entire lap or the entire race rather. Now coming into her final portage after the bottom turn, from the bottom turn up through the old bridge, portage, quick half a lap and back to the finish line. So here she is at the final bottom turn. look back to see where our nearest competitor is and not even in sight yep just at the top of the picture there Let's see will be Poland in second place good couple of minutes maybe more behind Tronsana France and then another 45 seconds back is Vasquez from Spain. All a little bit uneventful for a while now. Oh. A bit of a journey back to the final portage for both races. Nothing's going to change in the junior women's canoe. They're all too spread out for anything significant to happen. But everything to play for in the junior women's K1 second group of four all fighting it out for the bronze medal will be quite an exciting portage so far it's been the Portuguese Fernandes who's had the best of the portaging the Italian's been probably last out of each portage so far Duffield a little bit slow getting into a boat she'll need to speed things up for the final portage Final bottom turn now for the two Hungarian K1s. It's Fichetti leading from Nagy, both together as they have been pretty much throughout. Second group just in shot, about a minute and a half maybe behind. Fakete looks strong. Fakete looks really strong. He does look strong, but yeah. you know from history he's going to mess up the voltage, mm -hmm. and there's just no way back from that, I think, with it so close to the, to the finish line. I think Nagy knows that she's in control of the portage.
just going to overtake second place now in the canoe race. Top of your picture there, you just saw the second group going down, heading down towards their final last turn. That was picking up, a, it was kicking off a bit in that group. Get positioning around the turn, group of four still. Italian has caught them up after the her poor portage. So what are you thinking now if you're Fichetti coming into this portage, thinking I've messed up three out of three? What's going to change? You surely have to do they this. Know, one they know each other well, these two, two girls. So see if, if she will try something into the, into the portage. She's come in first each time, but she's always left second by a considerable margin. Nagy feels like she's done her bit. She's put her paddles down, let Fichetti take the lead. So about two minutes from the portage, maybe. First two in each race in shot there. To the left of your screen, the leader in the women's canoe, Tronsan from France, then the two Hungarian girls, and then Jadek from Poland in the C1. So apologies to the viewers if uh, Stefan and I have been talking over each other. We just got a little bit of a mix up with our headphones in the studio here. And now, Hungary one, Hungary two. A view through the bridge. Tronsan from France, pretty much at the bridge now. Then it's the portage and just one short lap or half a lap to the finish. Sand comes through the final time into her portage. No rush, no fuss. A step out, lost contact with her boat a little bit there. It's not very crucial, not ideal, but there really is very little stress for her. Running through for the final time. So this is a final portage. Yeah. Reste bien concentré jusqu'à l'arrivée, hein? C'est bien, c'est bien. T'as l'énergie pour y aller jusqu'au bout. Not moving so well through the sand as she was in the early stages. But she, she doesn't have too comfortable lead. It's interesting. She, I don't know much about canoes, but she gets in front foot first, and the Spanish girl gets in with her knee first, and then brings her other leg over. She looks a lot tidier, the French girl, than the Spaniard. So maybe someone who paddles canoes can tell me why and what that's all about. It's quicker to put in the front leg first. They can to just kick and go out, but it takes a lot, of, lot more technique and training to do it. So here comes the sharp end of the women's K1 into the portage for the last time. For Ketty, knowing she's messed up three out of three so far. Nagy, knowing that she's gained a good few lengths each time so far. As they come in, we just lost a picture for a moment in commentary. So. 
looks like we did miss something there, but only something we've seen three times already on this race, that Nagy can get out of her boat well, and Fichetti can't. And it's just... It was a decisive move now from Nagy. She won't lose this now. Oh, geez. You can't beat a bit of Hungarian emotion from a coach there, can you? <laughs> so, double ha Hungary in top, uh, exactly as uh, last year. We have seen that so many times. Um, this great, great uh, padding nation of, of uh, Hungary. Last year it was uh, Nagy who won and uh, Balog for uh, uh, second. Now, second place in the junior women's C1, having all sorts of difficulties carrying her boat. Finally stopped to empty it out. And the second group of in the this is, ladies this is K1, crucial. that, that is uh, really interesting as well. Good. They need to run hard, it's Fernandez running the best as she has on the other pool, she is Duffield second. She's hanging in there, the Italian's doing a little bit better this time, it's Otto, she stayed third, it's Sorensen, fourth dangling off the back of the group. They're going to get in at exactly the same time as the C1 as well, it's going to be a little bit chaotic, and it's going to be whoever gets away from here cleanest, it's going to be Portugal from, who's next, there's no boat in sight, from Duffield, Great Britain, from Italian there, her boat's in the shallows still, I don't know if her rudder's clear, but that's pretty tense. Nagy not too far ahead of Fichetti either. So they're going to be together, I think, for the finish. It's going to be quite exciting for them. Not so in the women's C1. It's going to be France all the way. But it's Nagy from Fichetti. The gap's only about six, seven lengths. Fichetti will close her by the time they come out of the bridge, out of the turn. But she's coming now. She, she, she has not given <coughs> up. She's going very, very strong now, Fichetti. I think she will close the gap. She will close the gap, yep, by the turn. She'll have that gap closed. They'll come out of the bridge together. Such an expensive way, but there's Fernandez. She seems to have broken away from the other three. In No, nope, Fernandez is with one other. I, I'm hoping that's Duffield from Great Britain. So they're going to fight it out for third as it stands, but Fichetti closing Nagy down. As they come out the turn, they're going to be together. So this is going to be some finish. Fichetti on the water seems to have had the best speed, but then maybe we haven't seen everything Nagy's got. She's using the turn uh, wonderfully. It's a little bit less uh, waves, uh, washes uh, to go over uh, when you turn. Watch her there now, very tight into the boy. Gain some ground. Skillfully done, Fichetti there. They will be together after the... After the um, so it's game on and it's the K1 race that's the most exciting finish it's the C1 France is going to finish well ahead that's done and dusted that's clear so there's France Tronsan from France looking a little bit jaded now but in the background it's Nagy from Fichetti and this is looking pretty tense now Fichetti just dropping around the back. Nagy really can't afford to let her pass to any stage now. And it's game on. Fichetti has overtaken Nagy. There's nothing Nagy can do about it. Fichetti, the stronger on the water, has been all the way through. So Fichetti, Nagy is really struggling now. So the two leaders, you got the French in the C1, Tronsan, you got Fichetti in the K1. I didn't see that coming, Stefan. 
no. it just seen that her portaging was so bad and it's such an expensive job to catch up but she's done it she's done it four times now and now she's even pulling away from Nagy very strong on the water for Kete if I get in Nagy and Nagy looks Nagy. really well, tired now I think she's there. Long. she's yeah that's a painful last 500 meters for her and they used to see one <laughs> yeah as well I get the shoes we're choosing the road there going quite close to the C1 C1's not enjoying the waves there behind the two K1s no stress for her. So it's Piketty all the way now. She looks very, very uh, com not comfortable, but uh, confident. Hugely impressive step yes. to close that gap, yes. come straight past and take the win. Wonderful technique, uh, straight arms using her uh, hips and legs uh, wonderfully. It's going to be Hungary, double Hungary, and it's uh, Pakete. Pakete that wins the gold medal for Hungary in the uh, women junior k1 very very impressive very impressive indeed in so many ways impressive from hungary they've got two girls up the sharp end france across the line now in the women's c1 Attila Tronchin. and now it's going to be a fight for third if we can get the cameras back up to the second group it would be great There's the, there's the winners. I'll try and look out the window to see the second group. It looks like Fernandez and Duffield. Yep, they're on screen now. It's Fernandez from Duffield. Fernandez has been the better portage. Duffield probably early days was stronger on the water. But Fernandez has come stronger and stronger through the whole event. They've got about 200 meters to go to the finish. Duffield having a go now. It's going to be very tight. Duffield moving up inch by inch, but there's not far to go. It's race on for these two. There's the finish. They're pretty much both full on now. Started his sprint uh, quite uh, early. It's Fernandez. Looks like she's got the best of it. It's a tough run in for Duffield. It's, it's Fernandez. Fernandez all the way. Duffield never made an impact. Fernandez was able just to match her speed. Bronze to Portugal. Bronze oh. to Portugal. It's going to be a popular medal here. Absolutely so. <laughs> Duffield did so much work in the early days. Fifth and sixth is Zotta from Italy and Sorensen from Denmark. They've just crossed the line. For Rita Fernandes, first medal for Portugal. And we know they've got some big names yet to come in the competition. Second across the line in the women's canoes will be Poland. Followed closely by Vasquez from Spain. So a smile already from Poland. She's pretty pleased with her day's work. Silver medal to Paula. I'd say very pleased with her day's yeah. work. Maya Sajdek from Paula. Very happy with that. And just behind her, crossing the line any minute, will be Andrea Vasquez, Spain. She's gone across the line now. She will not want to be remembering the first 10 minutes of this race. Look at that. You can tell that's what she's thinking as she crossed the line. She, she did a good job. Very good job her. to come third, but that was yeah. definitely a what-if shake of the head at yeah. the end of that. That was uh, seventh. seventh. Seventh is boat 58. That's uh, Katerina Milova from Czech Republic. And behind her, boat 55 is Hidalgo from Spain. We've seen her before, and I think not a great day for her on the water. 
You'd expect it to be a bit nearer the sharp end. Tough day also for 63. Azevedo spent a long time mixing it with the second group and then just gradually faded back through the pack as the race went on. Just clinging on bravely for quite a long time. Finishing light. Watch her teammate come third. Probably doesn't soften that blow any. And Slovakia and France. We've got uh, Anita Konichna from Slovakia and from France, we've got uh, Capuchin Debu. <laughs> Meanwhile, across the line, Beatrice Barros from Portugal, fourth in the C1. Two K1s from Slovakia and France. Tenth and eleventh. This is uh, Anita Konechna. Uh, They're closely followed by the second Italian. Vincent Twelve. Canamola, Bianca Canamola, Canamola, sorry, Italy. <laughs> Kayle Enders in the women's C1, Ukraine. We've got Marita Moncharova. So it looks like our third place was a local girl yeah. from the local club. So happy. Really great, great I'd day to see her upset, to be fair, Stefan, if that's yeah. happy. <laughs> Good shot, Jim Rossiter there in the background, one of the old timers. Part of the furniture in marathon racing these days. In fact, Jim was at marathon racing before marathon racing was invented, <laughs> I believe. Team manager for the British team for so many years and then commentating at least 10 years after that. 61, finishing 13th is um, uh, Christina Delor. She might not be so happy of this uh, day. She finishing, finished the pause at the World Cup in, in Mechelen uh, previously this year. For Spain and Germany, the next two finishes. So early swim for um, Hidalgo. It was an expensive one for her and 51 there, hardest Luda in Germany. Finishing the 15th, I think. Yeah, eighth in the World Cup for this this year. The trainer is uh, Metschuk. Is he? World, okay. world champion in K2 marathon in 1992. It was in Brisbane in 1992. And 
Mr. Man Well, yeah, check well, me out, Skinny. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> So across the line now, or next, is going to be Amber Yanis. And 67, Natalie Pavlosen from Croatia. She's going to finish just ahead of Rita Nascimento. Oh, wow, they're still going up towards the bridge, sorry. I was confused which camera we were on. So those three are still going up around the top turn, and they'll be back in a few minutes. So that's pretty much it for the first session. Hopefully we find out some of the technical things in the commentary box. I've had a slap on the wrist for a couple of bad calls, judgment calls, but that's normal. Getting to be known for bad judgment calls. <laughs> Sun's coming out now. We had that little rain flurry. Got a little bit of technical stuff to sort out here, so I might leave you for a while while that gets done, and I'll we'll be right back for the next race.
Rita Fernandez, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. A bronze medal uh, at your home, home wa water. Uh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that's great. I have all my family and my friends here, so it have another, uh, another taste. It, sound, it tastes so good. Was it a tough race? was. Yeah, it was. We are four of, there were four of us, yeah. So I have to work so hard to, to hand in the third place, yeah. Yeah, you stayed together, all four of you. When did you realize you had a, the opportunity to have a bronze medal? I think I believed from the start. I just, in the end, when we're just two of us, I just wanted so bad that I just <laughs> have to go. Yeah, so you started the in sprint uh, very, very early. Yeah, I knew that I can. Uh, good, I just did a really good portage. So in the end, I just have to go. <laughs> Once again, congratulations. Thank you so much.
The gold medal and European champion from Hungary, Atleta Dorine Fekete. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Hungary. Bem-vindos o vosso aplauso às medalhadas do Campeonato da Europa de Maratona 2017. Já estão as atletas prontas para os futuros.
Jorina Fakete, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> this is your first international marathon victory? Yes, it was my first one. It was very hard and it was my first competition abroad. Oh, your first competition whatsoever abroad? Yes, it was my first one and I'm really happy because it's a beautiful place in Togel. A beautiful place and a beautiful race from you. Uh, you dropped off uh, every portage and we thought it you were quite uh, finished uh, after the... How did you manage to catch up after each portage? Uh, we practiced it with my coach. We, in Hungary it was as well, this one, it was my finish better than the other Hungarian girl and we practiced this. So uh, you already knew you, you could uh, win? Yes. Uh, congratulations, fantastic. Thank you. A medalhada de ouro e campeã de Europa. And the gold medal and European champion from France. Mathilde Troissin, atleta de França. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional de França.
Mathilde Tronsen, congratulations. Thank you very much. This was your first international victory in the C C1 uh, junior women? Yes, yes. So, how was the race? How was your course? My course was really difficult. At the first portage, I had a lot of trouble. I had to vomit. It was a very hard uh, race, and uh, the first uh, portage, I feel uh, really bad. You feel bad? Why? Uh, I don't know. L'effort. J'ai trop couru, je pense, trop vite. J'avais du mal à repartir sur l'eau. Je pense que c'est ça. Because it was very intense, and uh, after the the uh, running uh, session, it was very hard to paddle again. When did you realize you should win? Free uh, uh, tour, how do you say? Yes. How do you tour. So on the third lap, uh, you, you were realizing to win, and then just yes, transportation. Once again, congratulations. Thank you very much.
finish there.
Put it on. Só se prenderes com o que está aqui.
Sounds good. Okay, Stefan, so we're back. Yes, um, welcome back to uh, the European Championships here in uh, Ponte de Lima, Portugal. Uh, it's quite rough conditions uh, in this uh, morning second session. Uh, it's raining and the wind has picked up a little bit. So um, the start will be within five minutes or so, and me, Stefan Gustafsson and Ivan Lawler will try to guide you through this uh, K1 women under 23 race and the C1 men under 23, starting within five minutes or so. Quite a qualitative uh, race, races, uh, especially this uh, K1 women race that will start first and five, five minutes after them uh, the C1. Only 10 athletes, Stefan, in that, but it's hard to pick a winner. I mean, you, you tend to go with Hungary from history alone, but you've got so many good athletes in there. You've got Lucia Arquera, you've got Alex Lane from Great Britain. Uh, I've just watched Tanya Alvarez paddle pass. She looked really good as well. So And Rosenkilde from uh, <coughs> Denmark. I saw uh, uh, Noemi Horvat and um, Emily Rosenkilde in... Um, uh, earlier this summer and uh, uh, Horvat first were second on uh, K1 women the senior so she and she is a really good marathoner Rosenkilde were second in the short track and fifth uh, on the uh, long course and these two are the only ones in this um, in this start that participated also in the World Cup the second Hungarian, uh, uh, Sofia Shalavaris, uh, we haven't seen her before. Uh, it might be one of her first international marathons. It's not even a name that's come up as junior, as far as I'm aware. It's no. not a name I've heard of at all. But if you've made it into the team, you've she had to go through a fairly heavy pr process to do that. So, Yeah, Hungary is really, really good in these categories. So um, we will see Noemi Horvat with boat number uh, 155 and Rosenkilde boat number 158 and uh, Sofia Shalai Burrus boat number 151. We will look for them, of course. Uh, Alexander Lane were sixth uh, last year at the Europeans and is now one year older and one, one year more experienced. And paddling a lot better than she was a year ago, Stefan. I have to say that because I've been trying to work with her. So if she's not paddling better, that's then my fault. And I'm not going to accept any blame. So I'm so going to tell you now she's better than uh, she was before. So that's the case. But most of her training she does at Longridge Canoe Club, which is one of the busiest and most progressive at the moment in the UK. She trains with a good group there. And she's tough. She might not have the initial speed some of the other girls have got. That's something she's been working on, I know. But 
He's certainly not going to give it up. And uh, also Anna Correa from Portugal. Um, we have seen her uh, also previously on the marathon courses, and uh, she has done well. Last year she finished uh, finished eighth. I think she can do better. I think there's a lot of girls in here thinking that they can do it today. I think it's uh, a very open field. Absolutely. So yeah, almost all on the start line. Just a couple to get on there still. One on the far side, Anna Slejo from Norway. She's going to be the last one. And in the middle, in the red boat from, I think, Spain. Liliana Resende from Portugal. Also there in the mid middle. That's the middle one. OK, yeah, that's in the red boat there. So they're on the line. And away they go. And it's Rosenkilde that is uh, trying to take the lead there. 158, uh, the, the Danish white shirt. Rosenkilde that is a good sprinter as well. Leading out from, from, um, from the start now. And of course, uh, Noemi Horvat. Noemi Horvat, uh, 155. It is Rosenkilde that is taking the lead. Denmark, the strong marathon nation, nation of Denmark, especially on the female side uh, nowadays. Has been for quite a while. If they put their good athletes in, sometimes they choose not to, don't they? And mm. it's, uh, I think a lot of countries have that problem where there aren't enough for the quality depth and quality that they can have the sprinters and the marathon as a separate entity so there's a bit of overlap and sometimes they have to choose which event to go to but it's a big group everyone's in it still I think we will see that um, at least for the first uh, lap, the first lap is uh, <coughs> no portage so they will try to keep together So leading, we've got Horvath on the far right of the group there, Alex Lane. Next to Horvath is a Hungarian compatriot, um, Celai Voros. Rosenkild in the all white, Sletjo, blue boat, white top. Two Spaniards tucked very tidily in the two V washes. Uh, Portuguese suffering in the red boat out there, that's uh, Rosende. Liliana Rosende, she's struggling just to maintain a bit of contact with the group. There you see confirmation of that. There's two of them out there to the left of the group. They're struggling for now. Meanwhile, the group of seven is going to get to the front to the first turn altogether. It's uh, Anna Sletcher in the blue boat there from Norway. The light blue boat, Anna Sletcher that uh, have done quite good on marathon courses over the years, even since she was a junior. From the canoeing family of Norway, Sletsjö. Father and grandfather, I think, all was paddling. So first turn, it's going to be Sletsjö that suffers here. She's on the, oh, we've got oh. a swimmer. We've got, that was the, that's the Danish, that's Rosenkild's gone in. You've got the two Hungarians in Great Britain. One of the Spaniards will make it. Sletsjö's still struggling. Rosenkild is, I don't know what she's doing. She's just sinking her boat for now. But it's three away, it's two Hungarians and Great Britain away, two Spaniards, they'll work together to close up. And Rosenkild all over the place, but the two Hungarians and Great Britain, one of those Spaniards at least has got a place in that group. There's a beautiful V going there, and it's going to be whichever of the Spaniards that is first will get that V. Apologies for not knowing which Spaniard is which at this distance, but it's 159, which is Arquero. Uh, Rosenkild not looking motivated to 
get back in the boat. Here we see it. It's Slet Joe taps the back of her boat, turns her inwards. Just manages herself to get back inside that second boy. And it's game over for Rosenkild. Here comes the rescue boat to get her now. So it's tough when the groups are that big going into a turn. It obviously bunches up. There's not room for two or three on the inside of the leader, only maybe for one, two at the outside. And it just got a bit too close. A little bit of contact between the boats. And now both Spaniards back in the group. So we've got Arquero and Alvarez. So on the far side, 159 is Arquero with the sunglasses, Alvarez with no sunglasses. Leading at the moment, 151, Chilai Vorosh. Alex Lane next to her, 153. And as they come back past us in the commentary, the C1s begin to line up. But it's a group of five with two chasers. The chasers look like they might make contact. That's um, Slet Joe and from Portugal is Rosende, no, not Rosende, it's Correa. Romans in the background, boats come through. Sergio really needs to just make that next half a length jump to be in the V. But as they go under the bridge, we're on the line with the C1s, impressive lineup of C1s, 15 boats in this race. And very, very, very unpredictable as uh, C1 men you and yours always are. Um, we have uh, Patrick Piotrowicz from Poland, uh, boat number one, 115, close, um, on the far outside, he was fifth last year. And um, Arvid Heine from Germany, boat number 106, uh, finishing ninth. But we also know that uh, Portugal has a good, crew, a good crew in this race. So has Spain um, and Hungary, of course. And France as well, we've seen sure. them win the junior women's and their athlete 110 is... Uh, Leo Dunilac, he's up there. So it's France from France. Yeah, yeah. and Sofian Trousseau, um, number 113, who is leading in the middle there. So it's Trousseau from Dunilac. Two from Ukraine in the blue shirts there. And here we will see proper uh, group racing, I think. Uh, we didn't see that in the morning uh, among the, the ladies. The ladies have not been uh, on the courses for marathon uh, that many years, but these guys are more experienced. Uh, so we will have a very good race here, I think, in the C1 men junior. So Rosenkild back in her boat after considerable amount of time that's a uh, pretty bleak day for her she would have expected to be up the front end of the race just got herself caught in a bit of trouble actually she doesn't look like she's carrying on does she no. that's somebody who's coming in probably she has a lot more to do this weekend uh, under 23 girls used to also race and um, the K1 and maybe K2 seniors. So as the C1s come 
to the first turn. It's Hungary, Portugal, Poland. France on the far right, I think. Top of the picture, Ukraine. It's a group of five, six boats coming into the first turn. Two Spaniards there. Contact between the two and the front six. Maybe five now. Lead boat. It's got just clear of a length ahead. Going around the turn very efficiently. That's quite an impressive field, maybe the best field we've seen of junior men's team. Absolutely so, absolutely so. So seven portages, or seven laps rather, for the K1 women and six for the men in the C1s. And it's Alex Lane taking it on. Be very happy to keep the pace going, make a few people suffer. Coming into the turn, most people look reasonably comfortable in the group. It's Slet Joe again who's struggling with change of pace around the turn. It must be quite steep going into that turn because they missed that first point by quite yeah. a way. You don't always see that from the pictures, but I noticed that in the first session this morning, and it's, it's the same again. Now it's going to be down to a group of five. Around they come. The speed must be quite high. I expected them to be much more together, all of them, during this first lap. But after the accident, uh, the Rosenkilde accident, uh, the, it, uh, they took the advantage of that and, and set the speed and now back to five. I think it's going to be hard at this sort of speed to keep maintain a group of five. I think someone's going to suffer. Yeah. And that's a, you know how it is, Stefan, you work the group round and round and round until somebody finally cracks. It's a, it's a tough group to see who's going to crack there, though. The two Spaniards are quality, the two Hungarians quality. Alex Lane's probably the newcomer to the group, and I know she's tough enough to stay with them. And we've actually been doing a bit of work on rotating the groups round in training as well. So... I would hope she would be able to stay there. She's going to portage at least as well as the others. I've got high hopes for her portaging. So she, she seems quite relaxed. As does all of them. There's not a lot of stress in the group at the moment. The one who's getting the worst of this at the moment on the far right of the picture. It's Noemi Horvat in the lead. Seeing her in um, Mechelen previously this year, she really likes to stay in top and do what her teammate in the senior category used to do. Uh, Renate Che always stay in the top and controlling the, the race. Alvarez on the far right of that group. Just see the nose of her boat around now. There you go. And she's she's got the worst of the washes. She doesn't look too flustered by it. Yeah. 
Anna Sletjo in the blue boat making her way back into contention again. But I think she's just going to be on that yo-yo string all day, stepping yes. on and off the group, on and off the group. It's, it's a brutal place to be. But every time this group changes speed, I think she's going to be back to where she started from. There she is. She's just made back, made contact back, close the gap. It's good work from her. Six boats. Where would you go? I mean, Anna Sledge's caught up to that group. If she just slotted in behind Alex Lane instead of on the outside of the group, her life would be a lot more comfortable, and she'd be a lot safer when the, the speed yeah, changes. Yeah, she's very, probably, very probably she's a little bit tired now and try to find the, the wash to rest on for a while uh, out there on the on the outside. It's not very good washes there, but um, coming up from behind, you need to rest a little bit and. Uh, try to find it there that's the problem actually when you come up like that you need to keep going to squeeze someone else out from the group but there, there is a, a space behind Alex Lane yeah. you can have a, a V wash behind Alex Lane there and you can get a little bit better rest and when the group changes if you're in the middle of the group then you've got more options if you're on the outside of the group you only have one option always moving and you have to move yes so she should go in the middle there. Yeah. But some people don't feel comfortable in there. You can see the water's choppy yes. in the middle there. Some people don't like that. You do you have to learn to love it. I think it's important to do that. It depends a bit on how you train. If you train, if you're training in a big, in groups and a big group, you're used to this uh, rough yeah. water. If you're always train, training alone, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. So I don't know <laughs> where she's gone now. So hmm. I just dropped off. I'm not sure what happened there. We didn't see anything on in camera view. Either she went the other side of the bridge pillar, which is possible. So she would have just been out of shot and she'll be back in next time we see them. Or just the other side of that bridge, maybe she took a swim. So we, Four, four, but uh, increased no, the speed she's still slightly. She's there. She's, she's, she's still she with us. Yeah, yeah. She, she probably took the other, other side of the, of the bridge. Right outside here now. So Horvath leading. The group looks very under control. But I don't, don't think an awful lot's going to happen now until we get to the portage in elapsed time. One more full lap and yeah, when she comes up until the portage, turn, uh, 20 minutes or so. so. Tanya Alvarez there. Bizarrely, it says Tanya Yates on her boat, but a lot of Spanish people have at least 15 names. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it could be one of the other 14. So on our program, she's Tanya Alvarez. On her boat, she's Tanya Yates. That was the top end of the C1 race. Five, just as it was around the first turn. You've got Hungary, uh, Germany, Portugal. Germany is uh, Arvid Heine, who was the winner uh, in uh, Mechelen. And uh, Poland is uh, Patrick Piotrowicz, who was second. I think also um, uh, Gregor uh, Ludwig, who had a bronze medal in Mechelen on the world, in the World Cup there in uh, June, are there among the top. So a little bit, a couple of steering problems. See the back of the group there. What he's done, he's just dropped back so he can get the front half of the turn tight, but I'm not sure that that's going to pay off in the end. Going to come around, trying to keep the turn tight. We've lost contact with the group. No one at the front there is in a rush to get away. And second group might be the big gainers from that. Spanish paddler there. He's going to come out ahead, I think, the Hungarian.
So here we see the turn. And just out the back of that group, the red, that's the pole in the red, sorry. So th this was the one who suffered. He's back with the group. So Poland, Portugal, Hungary, Germany. We're back up to the top turn. Just as we'd said, Slet Joe just off the group again. It's a brutal day for her. It's Alex been. Lane also suffering here. Second wash out around the outside of a bend. That's tough. She needs to get around there. She needs to cut off. Whoever's on the front wash. And the speed is being taken up by Alvarez. And it's quite... <coughs> Quite intense out there for the girls at the moment. Alex Lane needs to move up, take the Hungarian out. Here she goes. Here yeah. she goes. Come on, Alex. Do the do the job. Alvarez looks uh, really strong. Let Joe there, not looking forward. She's looking down, feeling a bit sorry for herself. That's a big gap. Alex has done the job. She's got onto the front front wash. And yep. it's the second Spaniard. Arquero. Who suffered there. She's on the fifth at the moment. And so the cycle repeats over and over. Out until they got <coughs> four in the group. Yep. It's hard to see who will fall off this group. So Arquero at the back at the moment. She didn't look that uncomfortable. Didn't look that flustered by it. I don't think much will change. Portage is the next significant happening in this group, I think. Might be the last we've seen a sled, Joe. Back of your shot there. It's going to be hard to see her make contact with this again, especially if the Spaniards keep running like they are. The gap's quite big now. They see the mountains in the background in the previous shot. Nice view of this uh, beautiful city, Ponte de Lima, one of the oldest cities in Portugal. The oldest, some oldest village. The oldest, Stefan, it's yeah. important. It's an important definition. Yeah, it, it's not a city; it's a town or a village. We've been here since ancient time. Some argues that Odysseus uh, visited the city, not the city, the village. Village. He opened it, yeah. and he opened the uh, the supermarket when that when that first came, a couple of thousand years yeah. ago, and then the Romans came and built a bridge so people could go to that supermarket. That's right, two thousand years ago, <coughs> and the bridge is still in use. And here they are just passing it. It's Roman Roman valves. They're obviously proud of the Roman heritage. There's, a, there's quite a lot of Roman uh, statue things around, as well as um, cattle, obviously. Yeah. Romans and cattle, they're quite, quite proud of both. It's an ag agricultural area, but also quite touristic. And Ponte de Lima is uh, one of the best canoeing clubs in Portugal for the moment. I think it's been the, the winner of the club championship for the last 10 years, oh. Stefan. 
So yeah, it's a very successful club and a beautiful venue, obviously. So here's the men's C1. You've got Hungary, Pol you're Poland leading, then Germany, Hungary, Portugal, Spain. Two from Hungary, one from Portugal, Spain, and Poland, and Germany. Still a well-organised group. Just one out to the side, and even the, uh, <coughs> the following group, they're moving very well as well. On the far side of the river there, from Ukraine, he saw what went on in the junior women's race this morning, and actually on the first lap, that is the better side to be on. So head on shot there. So Duarte Silva leads for Portugal. Arved Hein in the black and green boat from Germany. The two Hungarians, that's Shimon and uh, Fayez, Daniel Fayez. And then in Spain is uh, Jaroslav Celestenko. Not, not typically Spanish, no. I'm thinking. And uh, Daniel Fayez. Uh, that's uh, the Hungarian. And um, Silva Duarte, as you said, Portugal, and um, Patrick Piotrovic from Poland, who uh, were second at the World Cup previously this year and fifth last year. Spaniard just struggling a little bit on the washes there as they come in or up towards the second top turn. It's a good group and a well-organized group. Spaniard is just struggling, just hanging on there. The top six is then uh, Celestenko from Spain, boat number 102. Arvid Heine, boat number 106. Um, Sim Sebastian Simon from Hungary, boat number 109. Uh, Daniel Fechez uh, from Hungary, 112. Silva Duarte from Portugal, 114. And uh, Patrick uh, uh, Piotrovic from Poland, 115. That's the top six. Hungarian struggling again around the turn. It's Daniel Fayez. We saw him struggle on the bottom turn, now the top turn as well. Could be a little bit hard to steer. Steer C1, it's no rudder. They are steering uh, by the paddle. Shelestenko falling off the back of that group here at the front, though. It's looking tight. Into the V, watch there, Alex. So off the back of that group, just str struggling to hang on. He's gone to the corner, the inside of the bend. The bend goes round to the left there. Not sure where the others are going. It's, uh, Arquero, Lucia Arquero, I think. Uh, Spain that is struggling a little bit now. But they will be all together. Arquero's going. She's heading in for the V. If she can get it behind the group, maybe. Somebody else needs to be in that V. Yeah. Anya should, uh, should have Alex, done that. Alex, yeah, Alex. should be yeah. in that V. Absolutely there she goes now. So. Drop back and get into that V quickly. She heard you. Telepathy. And then 
and then uh, Arquera had some problems immediately. It's, it's really, really <coughs> important to see these uh, these things when they when it's ongoing. It's uh, seconds to take a decision and, and making the right move. But e each time you you delay that move, it costs you yes. way more than it looks like. It looks like it costs you 20 seconds of work, but it's not. It's, it adds up over the time and. Yeah, Arcara now has to come and cut out a teammate from the left-hand side of that group, and hopefully, that's Arcara. It's uh, um, actually Alvarez. Alvarez, so sorry, has some problem there. So Alvarez in the pink striped boat there. There she is. It's tough for her now. She's coming up the side of the group where her friend is. Friend's looking over. She looks really relaxed, Arcara. <coughs> so Alvarez just about to make contact with Arquera and if Arquera is her friend she'll let her onto the side wash and has to take the V for herself Arquera who were fourth last year and in, in this race the under 23 women European Championships So all five back together. <coughs> Alvarez still on the outside of the group. Coming, we haven't got far to the portage. And here comes the C1s under the bridge. On their way down to that bottom turn. Bit of contact between the back two there, Poland and Hungary, side by side. Celestenko in the picture again. Seems like he has some trouble to steer. I've seen that in the turns as well. Nice and easy are they going? Michelle Stenko, it looked like he was with the group, but he's just off the back of the group when we change the camera angle. And as they go down to the bottom turn, here come the lead women, five in the group. Portage is going to be quite crucial. We saw how much you can win and lose on a portage in the race earlier today. So they'll be thinking about it already, thinking about their positioning. It's Horvath. Horvath's leading. Amy Horvath, also good uh, portage here. So they've got about well, less than a minute probably till their first portage. Should be going under the bridge about now. This is going to be an interesting one. Well, Noemi Horvat, and uh, we're second in um, in uh, speed the, stepping in up the World now. Cup. Yeah, she uh, were only beaten by Lili Katona, but that was in the senior category. This is under 23. Lili Katona is also from Hungary. Good positioning. Alex Lane there Just ended up back on the V. Little challenge. Balls and areas. Out tidy. Oh. As tight as it should have been. Very good run. Running There's from Al Bolton Gary. Alvarez is struggling. Other Spaniard, Arcaro, has come through the drinks lane. Alex Lane, best of the best of the runners, without a doubt. She had to, to keep up. <coughs> Wasn't convincing getting out of her boat, Alex Lane. Comfortable getting in, hopefully. Needs to leave with the others. Here we go. Very good um, portrait from Sofia Slice Burris. Passed into the boat. Can relax. Both, both Spaniards are going to come out together, which means they should both come back to the group. 
Alvarez, Thailand, Alvarez is setting the speed there. It's laying tight in nicely. The two Spaniards just behind. In fact, it's only one Spaniard. You can see from our window, you can't see it. Now you can. So it's only going to be one. It looks to me like Alvarez is not going to make this. So ideally, Arquero does make it. We have a group of four. Alvarez keep on going really fast now. So there's Arquero. She's looking up about five lengths to wash where she would love to be right now but that gap isn't closing so she chose to come in for a drink there stefan yes. it, it, that cost her that was five lengths exactly. that we've seen exactly so and that's going to be an expensive five lengths for her i think, I think she will make it uh, she she has been looking quite relaxed <laughs> so far Once, uh, soon approaching their first portage. All six still together. So there, where are they? Down by the bottom turn. Turn. Ah, yeah. The turns we've seen the Hungarian in the green and black boat suffer on all of them so far. This is going to be interesting because he's got someone on his inside, so if he has a bad one here, he can take them with him this time. I could see a split in the group still, just dangling off the back of that group, Shelostenko from Spain. So here we go, round the turn. Let's see how they lean the ball out. Really, really suffering. Towards. That's the way to he just can't seem to keep forward momentum while he goes. He has to back paddle to get around yeah. the turn and just loses all momentum. So that's <laughs> Polish guy's done well to get out around the back of him, come around the outside. There's Portugal and the other Hungarian. So. got Sebastian Simon on the left of your picture and on the right Duarte Silva at the moment at least those two are clear of the rest a couple of minutes till the others catch up probably but all those things get noted don't they Stefan mm -hmm. they'll, they'll know that the Hungarian can't get around the turn now they know they can or push him around in, the, in that scenario and it all adds into your big picture that you start to build of the race as you go through and once you've built that picture and you understand what everyone else is good at what they're bad at then you know what you're working with exactly and the, in the senior category where the athletes have met each other many many times over many years they know it from the start yeah. and that's yeah. set the tactics for them. and it, it is yeah, as well as being able to paddle fast, as well as being able to do the basic tactics of moving around the groups, understanding the personalities is a big, big part. Yes. Of, you know, if you get left behind with somebody, you need to know whether they're going to be prepared to work with you to catch up themselves, or whether they're just going to sit and wait for you to do it. So it all gets factored into your decisions, and that's, that's what's so good about the sport. There's so much to it. So the women's race here, still the front three. Arquero still fighting it to keep in touch with that group Alex Lane fancying her chances of a you d how excited do you get when it's down to three and you, your brain starts to go a little bit through lally for a while and you, you're, you're already counting medals for exactly for, exactly. for a few moments until our care comes back in and you have to readjust again but for those few minutes yeah well, it all de depends on uh, the thinking of the, of the top three if yep. they if they want to secure the medals, they could easily do it now, helping each other, going high speed until Akero gives up. But often they do it for a while, but then the ambition. But if they have no fear of Akero exactly. on the finish, then 
they might want her back in the group so they can have a bee wash yeah. when they need it. Yeah. There's a lot of thought processes go on, and it's it's not as simple as just plowing on for however long it takes, two hours. It's, there's a lot goes into this. Coaches on the bikes there. Alvarez. Pretty much. So the lead four opposite us as we watch the C1s on screen. C1s still with Shella Stenko out the back but not losing ground. down now she's lost touch with those front four I think Arquero maybe can do it back for now in the C1 it's a, bit of a, a journey Silva Duarte Duarte Silva from Portugal that is uh, keeping the speed up with the Hungarian guy Stefan he's obviously a good quality paddler he's at the front of the European Championships is it strange that he can't go around the corner you would think if you're that good, you uh, must turn around corners in training. Maybe they drop him off 20k up the river from the canoe club yeah. and tell him to paddle back every day. He's never, never ever gone around a turn before. Maybe a sprinter. And he's used to paddle straight forward, a thousand meters. Keep it simple, eh? Yeah. Let's do sprint. So, yeah, there's, there's more struggling here. I'm not sure. Presumably that's bridge pillar oh. problems. Yes. Yeah, there's a bridge. So, there's definitely uh, steering issues going on in this group. It is difficult to group, group race in C1. It takes many years to, to learn. Tidy out from Simon. Petrovic out next. Then Duarte. Those three are clear. Second Hungarian. Not only is he not good at turns he's not good at portages either it's going to be a tough day for him from where he is now so first in Shimon from Hungary by 109 followed by 114 Duarte Silva followed by Getrovic from Poland and Hein from Germany just behind them second Hungarian from Hungary Fez. Silva. Trying to capitalize on a decent portage there. He's second in. <coughs> quite, quite a decisive portage created. In the, dis gap. the distance between the front one and the back one. It's, it's huge after that. Yeah. It's hard to see how you can lose that much time in such a sh short period of time. What are you looking at? 20, 15 seconds there, maybe? You know, portage that takes 30 seconds. Yeah. All kind of things going on in the portage. Some of them got drinks. Some of, some of them adjusted the gear. I would but say mostly yeah it's, it's about uh, the efficiency and, yeah the in, efficiency. The in and out, in and out yeah. Yeah. some if you're really really good at portaging what can you gain five seconds maybe yeah but if you're bad you can lose a lot 20 seconds yeah. and why it's always most important to make safe and uh, tidy uh, portages and to practice a lot yeah. to have a good technique and to have your motivation is not to lose the group rather yeah. than to do anything fancy with it you don't have to do anything too spectacular you just have to stay with it so here's the front three 
Or what again? Arcaro, speed. still not in the picture. So three goals. A little bit of weed on the front of Alex Lane's boat there. I saw that you see the boat picking up the weed earlier there, the boat going around the course picking up the weed. So it's obviously a little bit of an issue here sometimes. They took a lot out earlier today. Boat with a big sort of rake on the front, drove around the course picking up the weed. Arcaro hasn't made a lot of impact on that group, Stefan. Be interesting to see. She's within 10 seconds coming to this turn. All comfortably around the turn and Arquero just not in the picture. Not in the picture at all. So this is down to three. I'm just going to desert you for a second here, Stefan, while I go on to my training group on Facebook and tell them to turn the telly on. Working well together, these three now. Comfortable. All three of them. They're coming up for their second portage. They all portage well first time round. With less stress this time, it's hard to see how it will go wrong for any of them. It's quite easy portages port here. It's uh, beach port portage, and uh, it's not steep in the water either. No, the run's fairly straightforward as well. It's a bit sandy at the end. is uh, more safe and uh, provide more excitement than uh, pontoons where accidents easily could happen. It's quite interesting watching the difference here. You see how this, she's paddling her hands just go down, down to the water. When you watch Alex, one of the problems we try and work with is she pulls back too far and doesn't put the pressure down. And you can see how much more efficient the two Hungarians look yeah. without the bent arm. We saw that in the morning as well. The Hungarians are probably more or less exactly the same. There's very much a national identity, isn't it, it? Is. in the way they paddle. It's very tidy, very efficient. bend their arms just providing all the strength from the hips and the legs yeah. so C1s as you said Stefan that was a decisive portage you got the two out the front now which was Hungary and Portugal Shimon and um, Silver. Simone just taking a little look back. Happy to let Silver take the lead for a bit. High in, in the background from Germany, black and green boat. 
Kwiatkowicz from Poland and Fejers from Hungary. picture well off the pace now so it's the lead three come under the bridge for the portage a little bit stressed the stress levels go up a little bit speed goes up a little bit to match and it's Cello Vorosh just being challenged by Horvath. Come in, Alex Lane on the left of the group. All running well. Alex running very well. Indeed, pass one. She's going to get in. Possibly first from this. Running well gives you a bit of time. Although she's all got a bit tight there among the three of them. All the way comfortably. There's Cello Vorosh. Just rushed to put her boat in. Didn't find a space, put it in on top of someone else when there's plenty of space for all of them there. And it just held her up that little bit. Meanwhile, Horvath, away, clear. <coughs> Alex Lane to her left. And Jelai Borosh just having to do a little bit of work to close the gap. She's going to do fairly comfortably anyway. For those three away, Arcaro just in the background. And another lap, routine lap, I think. It's going to be no drama. So, leaders. Then it's Arcaro, 26 seconds behind. And behind. Uh, maybe Slet Joe and somebody over a minute down on the leader. So these three clear. Arcaro, the only one poised to take advantage of any incidents or accidents. See Cella Voros just reaching down to pick up her drinks. A straw there. just move wide on the wash to do that she can run back down the wash now it saves her climbing over anything down and in and back in exactly where she wants to be bring straw in the mouth again and they're all comfortable so Stefan's just gone off to get me a cup of coffee which is that's my luxury, that is. Meanwhile, in the booth next door, commentating live in the venue, you've got Jim and his glamorous assistant, Carla. And I, I'm feeling a little bit hard done by, because you know, nothing against Stefan, but he is not as glamorous as Carla. So it's the under 23 women. Reach the top turn. Very much looking good for all three. So 
Peter Horvath leading. On her inside, Cello Boros and Alex Lane. It's hard to see anything changing in that group. From now, you can see just going into the turn, Zarkero. It's a tough call when you're in a race with two Hungarians. They're very willing to work together against a common enemy. Then we've all found ourselves in that position at some point. So for Alex Lane up the front there, she's going to have to do a little bit more than her share. If she wants to do some damage, she's going to have to come into the portage, one of the portages at least, in first place, and use a clearly superior run-in to see if she can make a go of it. Arquero still paddling well, but not gaining ground not losing too much though Ryan. that's Horvath having a either a drink or maybe could be blowing on one of those party things that come out and go, I think I think it's that I think she's celebrating early she's got some sort of mini Vuvuzela thing going on there. Was <laughs> I could be wrong, of course. I could be wrong. It could just be a drink. K2 doing well in the foreground there. Well ahead of the field. So Alex Lane leading out. I think that's a pretty good option for her. Maybe the only way she can do damage to these two is to keep the speed high. It is very hard, though, to see how she can damage them. On the water, at least. C2s. Nothing's changed. Out the back of your picture, Shelestenko from Spain. See, that's not true. That's the Polish, isn't it? So Chelestenko is actually leading the second group now. So he's made a bit of progress through the, through the ranks there. So it's Piotrovic from Poland who's dangling off the back of the six. Six is now broken into a two, a three, and a one. You can see them there. The one at the back is Poland. The two at the front is Portugal, Silva, and Hungary, Shimon. Simon leading from Silva. <laughs> then you've got Spain, Shelestenko. You've got Hein from Germany. And the second Hungarian, Fayez. And it's Poland that moved back down the field. I can't, I can't believe I'm taking flack on the commentary from a Vuvuzela comment. Who, <laughs> who, who, who would criticise me? It was a genuine mistake. I thought it was a Vuvuzela. It turned out to be an energy gel. Anyone can make that mistake. So it's the lead two, heading up for their portage.
These two look nice and comfortable, working together, swapping the leads occasionally. Coming into the portage, Simon from Duarte Silva. Next three, only what, 20 seconds behind, if that. Still in contention. Both running well, very well indeed. So our Portuguese opted to stay on the grass, makes life a bit easier on the running. He's run all the way to the end of the grass, he's still that through. <coughs> Sand gets a bit heavy. Also gets between your toes, makes you a bit uncomfortable as well. For those two, away and clear. Silver. Oh, Stefan's coming with a coffee and biscuits. So while you're away, Stefan, I took a lot of flack on the internet for the Vuvuzela comment. I think it's this guy, Yaroslo Cheles. If you can hear chewing in the background, that's because I'm eating a biscuit. A very nice one it is too. One of the nicest biscuits. Well, in the commentary box. Russian or Ukrainian parent, do you think? Yes, I think so. Got a cup of coffee as well. So, as you see, one race, it's Silva from Shimon, from, I think now that's Shelestenko. No, that's the Hungarian, sorry. Hungarian, then Shelestenko, and then Hein. Now it is in uh, uh, different uh, weather conditions on different part of the short course. Here at, um, at uh, the commentary boxes, the wind is increasing tremendously. Quite tough now. Right into the portage. Whilst at the uh, top end, it's still nice and calm. And it's a side wind too, Stefan, so it makes a big difference to which side you paddle on in the sea yeah. ones as to which which way is uh, your favoured way. So up at the front in the women's, nothing's really changed. Two Hungarians and Great Britain seemingly clear at the moment and for those that are asking the biscuits are a kind of rectangular water biscuit with a perforated middle so you can break them in half perfect for sharing around the turn go the girls okay now if you get, if, I don't know if we can get a replay of that it'd be nice because what you saw there was Alex Lane at the back she should have kept an overlap on the lead boat. Once you lose your overlap on the lead boat, the plume off the back of the lead boat pushes you outside the turn. So, a bit of a lesson there for those that are watching. But those three, way and clear, speed is being kept very high by the Hungarians there. So, Cello Voros. Taking the pace, Alex Lane's come round to her right hand side, good thing to do. And those three are looking very, very comfortable in their positions. Some of the tail enders in the women's K1.
Stefan, although I'm grateful for this coffee, it's not very big, is it? <laughs> not very big and not very strong. Me or the coffee? <laughs> I mean, you got it. So, yeah, I mean, normally when coffee comes in this size, it's very strong coffee. So we got a, a large coffee blend in a small coffee cup. I'm thinking not the best of both worlds. See the flags there? Oh no, we can't anymore. So we're back with the lead women. Nice shot. Alex seems a little bit troubled. Looking at her eyes. She, she looks like she's trying to do calculus or something. Yeah, she's got yeah. a difficult mathematical exactly. problem going on there. Exactly. And she's she's worried about it. But no, I don't think she'll be troubled. No, she she's it's it's good impression of how concentrated yeah. Yeah. the paddlers really are out there. Uh, often people ask me, what are you thinking about uh, during the, these hours out there? And it's so much thinking going on. It's constant. 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 Yeah. yeah. So always, always my, my thought process is, can I make this easier? Can I make it easier? Yeah, always, yes. is there somewhere I can be that's better than I am now? Yes. And Constantly watching uh, the fellow competitors, yeah. looking for mistakes or anything happens, and washes and winds and everything. If you want to do something spectacular, then you must make sure it does some damage to someone. Something spectacular that does no has no result is a waste of time. And these three are very untroubled right now. So already, when it's this organised this early, your thought process already jumps to the finish of the race yeah. doesn't it and you you start sort of thinking about how that might work out you, you'll be weighing each other up when the people catch up over a wash to see how quickly they do it how strong they are whether when you speed up people slide back a little bit too far see if they're a bit weak in that respect and there's a lot of weighing each other up goes on the c2s still shimon from silva from Fayez and then the back two, Hein and Shelestenko. the camera on the boom on the top of the bridge it is really great to have the organizers put in so much effort on getting cameras around the course it makes our job as commentators much much better and also of course for you the viewer get a much better impression of the race as it unfolds to the portage Hungarian girls picking up the pace a little bit Alex seems to struggle to match that pace but there's no rush hand on the front stand up much better portage from Alex that time Hungarian coming around for a drink and she knows that it is a little bit longer she's so running hard in there really running hard Now they just need to give each other enough space here to get in. Last time they all got in on top of each other. It was a problem. Now that looks much tidier. Away they go. So no real weakness in any of them there. They will stay together, I think. Yeah. So Chelai Vorosh in the white boat leading. From Alex Lane, from yeah, really back. Back in at the end of the portage, Now, if I was Alex, I'm obviously not, 
probably content to... She's got Horvath's second wash out now, which is good. She needs her there. When Horvath drops round, then Alex should go. But she's gone uh, until I stopped anyway. But I would start to try and pick on one person now, and keep them second wash out as many, for as many changes as possible just to see if you can do some damage. So I try and decide which of the two is the weakest and hold them second wash out for as long as I can. Would you have a different plan, Stefan? No, or same, exactly same so. sort of plan. Yeah. Cool. I hope they will keep on going, not starting to, co to compete each other uh, too early. Yeah. That's all. always a risk as well. Yeah teammates to compete. You can see from the flags in the background, the wind's pretty st stiff breeze now. Coming from the paddler's right-hand side now as they travel up towards the top turn. And they're 45 seconds ahead of Arcaro. Arcaro would have expected a medal today, I think, Stefan, in this field. I think it's quite impressive how these three have paddled as far away from the field as they have as well. It was a fairly <coughs> evenly matched field, on paper at least. I think with Rosenkill being out of the picture, she, she probably would have been in this group as well. She could have. But we, I saw them in... Mechelen and Lili Katona and the Horvat went away, the two of them. Okay. Uh, quite early. Fast into this turn. Alex will get relatively better through the through the race. I don't think she she hasn't got a problem with her, her athleticism. It's just the speed and the coordination. Sometimes she needs to try and make someone suffer. They're not going to suffer if they're one each side. I don't think. Horvat is looking over her shoulder for Aquera. It's also part of the thought pro process. Not forget the guys behind. So we've had a very helpful comment on the pronunciations of the Hungarian's name from An Andras. Mm -hmm. So it's Simon and Fayesh. Simon and Fayesh. Fayesh. Thanks. Thanks, Andras. Much appreciated. So there goes Fayesh around the turn. He struggled with all the turns. Maybe now on his own without being in the group. Life will get a bit simpler for him. Hein from Germany looking a bit jaded at the back of that group. While Shelestenko, who's been just making progress all the way Absolutely. through. He's, Absolutely. He is most definitely not out of this. just bouncing his boat there to get a bit of weed off the front. As they approach the bridge, and as they come through the bridge, really, the conditions change for them fairly dramatically, from being sheltered to being open. Wind coming heavily from their right-hand side. There's a view of the countryside around. It really is a very nice area. Shimon also trying to bounce the weed off the front of his boat. You can see it on there still. They all seem to be having a few problems with it. 
So both those lead boats, see the little plumes of water coming off the front of the boat where the weed is. And that can really annoy you. It becomes an irrational kind of thing, this little bit of weed on the front of the boat. It's more uh, mentally than, than yeah. real. Yeah. But you can generate an awful lot of hatred for a very small yes. piece of weed. Especially in the end of the race. A bit of artistic shot there from the cameraman. Family of ducks out for the day. Just about to portage, I believe. Yeah. Practicing portage. Yep. Nice shot, more artistic views from these professional cameramen that is more used to producing soccer, football than canoeing. Very professional team. And it makes such a difference to the overall presentation. It's so cool to have pictures to actually talk about, whereas sometimes in the past we have struggled, haven't we? But this is good, and now, oh. yeah. Baish from being almost out the back at one point and really struggling with his steering, is back in contention with and the front two. And also Shelishtenko. Shelishtenko, who was the first to drop off the Bigu, is now back in fourth position. We often see that in C1 category, more often than in K. K kind of. People drop, drops off and yeah. come back and it's shifting. I think sometimes they, some of them really struggle in the rough water. And yeah. when, when they're far enough behind that they're in clear water, they get back in their rhythm again, get back in, get, get themselves organized. So now we've got a race on. Absolutely. So here they come under the bridge. Shelestenko really not very far behind. Behind him, Hein, and behind him, right at the top of the screen, is Pietrovic from Poland, who won the big contenders early on, but now well off the pace. So under the bridge they go. Shimon <laughs> leads into the portage. Duarte Silva on his left and Fayesh in the back there. All out fairly cleanly. Shimon running well. We've seen Silva. He'll stay running on the grass. Doesn't like running on the sand. And this time Fayesh has matched them on the portage. Not like his first one, which was, looked pretty poor. Really seems to have got himself back together and back in this race. So Portugal away first. Feyish second. Shimon third, both from Hungary. Michel Stenko seems to have dropped off a little bit. Lost some gr ground over the portage. All three of those front ones ran very, very well. Yes. Ducks are over the portage as well, Stefan. They're just coming yeah. across the front of the commentary box now. It's all action here in Ponte de Lima. Ducks everywhere. Paddlers here and there. And this 
has become a much more interesting race with the three of them. Front of the women's race. One, two, three, all present and correct. So three at the front of each race. Women on lap five of seven. And the juniors on lap five of six. Chelai Borosh leading out in the women's race. As they come down around the bottom turn. Nice tidy turn from all three. Secure. And at the top end of the course, three C ones making their way round. Bayes this time managing to get round in a much more controlled way. Just behind them, as he has been from the start, really, Shelestenko. Hungary, Portugal, Hungary. So in fourth place, Shelostenko. Make our way to the front of the women's race in shot again. Hungary, Hungary, but this time joined by Great Britain. <clears throat> in the background at the top of your picture, Slet Joe headed down to the turn. A long way off the pace now. Behind these three is still Lucia Aquero from Spain. About a good minute behind now. And there she is. And time is probably against her now. If she's got any plans of catching up. It's 150 meters or so. Struggling all along. Still paddling strongly though. Absolutely. And it only takes a swim. 
for any of them in front, and then she got a medal. Even above the bridge now, the wind, you see the yes. wind on the course. It's Swedish weather. <laughs> Summer weather. <laughs> Around 20 and uh, a bit windy with showers. Oh, and in, in, as you speak, in comes the shower stuff. Yeah. And that is British. <laughs> I'm not sure it's British because it's not horizontal yet. It's <laughs> only horizontal rain really counts. So they're coming up to the bridge. That view, you see how far it is back to Arcuero. That's a, yeah. Probably over a minute yeah. to that. 253 yeah. meters now. So, Horvath leading into the portage. Seems very intent on doing that on each lap so far. Nicely, oh, oh, oh. Just gonna say nicely out the boat from all three, but just went a little bit awry there for Alex Lane. More than capable of catching that up on the run. Already past Chelai Vorosh. Round the corner first. Gonna get in first, having come out last is pretty good. Wish I could run like that. And again, Chelai Vorosh. If you put a boat the other side of Alex, she could have paddled now. Now she's stuck. Look at it, it's all chaotic. Craziness. Now look, just for the sake of putting your boat in, in the right place, there's all that faff. So they'll all get back in contention very comfortably. We just need to think a few seconds ahead to see what will happen. There's three away, a few raindrops on the camera lens again. But the sun's coming out. Group. Alex Lane, Great Britain leading. On her to her left in the picture is Sofia Chelai Vorosh. To her right in the picture is Naomi Horvath. Both from Hungary. And it's 1.30 now, as we can see on, on the screen. Chasers. And chasers means Aquero. One minute thirty seconds behind. See if we can get the camera view on the second and third group uh, as well. So looking back to Aquero there, it's a long way back from her to the following group, but front of the C1s. Now, I think that if Fayesh gets in front of these two, I think he could just paddle away. Absolutely. He's already closed them down, but he doesn't seem that motivated to do that. Thank you. If, if you've got clear water without the interference of the others. I think he will wait. It'll be really interesting to know, you know we don't the junior men see one we don't know their history but it'll be nice to know if anyone's listening from Hungary who knows how these two normally play out their races which of these two is the strongest
Simon has been at the front of the race from the start. Fayesh had a nightmare on the first two laps with his steering and with his portaging. And now he's closed the gap back up. Still struggling on his steering there, but just think. Just needs to get a free run at the turns. Good portage or two. I'm okay. Lead women again. We've just gone round the top turn. On lap six of seven. Lakefield, she's done enough leading, she pulling the old grab your drink trick. <laughs> Stefan, yeah. Desperately thirsty, need a drink. Put your paddles down, somebody else has to take the lead. Does she carry all the drinks, um, all the drink for, for the entire race on her back, in her backpack, while the other uses um, their drinking bags provided in the portage by their team leaders? Personal choice, or do you think a team choice, or how, how would that pan out normally? Normally, a personal, personal choice, I think. Some people like it to be safe, to, yeah. to have freedom of action in every port to carry the drinks. It's some extra kilos, though. Yeah. So an hour and a half into the race now. About half an hour to go. All the races are roughly around two hours. Down to our last biscuit in the commentary box. Oh, I'll have this half, Stefan, you can have the half. You see. One of the K1s get caught up there. Now, I don't think she's allowed to sit on the wash when they come through, which is a bit harsh. There's obviously a nice wash there, but you can see her moving away from them. She didn't have much choice for the moment. No, she was just caught as they came yeah. round her, but it's that's just one of the things that you, on the rules in the race there, she, kn she kn knew that and just came out off to the side of the group. And these three guys. back up so as the C1s come up towards the portage again, opposite us in the commentary, the lead three K1s have gone back down the other way. No change in that. Just swapping leads comfortably, as are the C1s coming in the opposite direction. So they're just going, there's the women there, C1, they're just going to pass each other on the course. One going one way, one going the other way. And if I can remember to do it, from the commentary box as the other women go past we'll give you a few positions of the tail enders so those three have passed us already next past us will be Aquero seems a very very long way behind now She's just coming past the commentary box now. So that's a good more than a minute and a half now, I'd say. Yeah, it's, it's over two minutes, yeah. probably. Close to 500 meters. But she's still moving strongly. So she's in, as we look at the leaders, Aquero is about two minutes behind these 
on her own in fourth place. strain starting to show on the faces, a little bit of puffing, a little bit of blowing. And very much now their thoughts are turning to the uh, finishing stages of the race. So there's the C1s coming back down, the K1s going up. They've crossed over just upstream of the bridge. Resende coming down with the C1s. Still no more women have come back past us in the commentary, so those top four absolutely miles away from the others now. It's four minutes now since the top goes past. Now, ho hopefully tomorrow books. we'll have our um, tag system up and running and we'll get all the time differences. We'll be able to bring you that as a graphic on screen. So into the portage. Oh. And it's kicking off there. It's Shimon has clearly made a decision. Going with him well is Duarte Silva and it's Fayesh who's just struggling to maintain contact. Now he's behind the washes, it's not going to get any easier, but it's Shimon making a break for the portage. And this could be final portage for these guys. Nicely jumped out of his boat, running well almost straight away, the boat never stopped moving. The other two only just out now, so this is full intent from uh, Shimon. Really needs to make this stick. He's gone to a lot of effort to make this gap. Folks still. We didn't see him get in, but the other two running. A lot more laboured in their running, these two, than Shimon was. But there's uh, Silva away. Fayesh has got the better of it. He's second out from the portage, but Shimon uh, up yeah, and running. A very, very, very decisive <coughs> move from Shimon. So much damage done in such a short time. <laughs> And now it's uh, full speed for all of them. So Silva didn't come out that well. He ran well, didn't get in cleanly. Once again, a huge gap created just over the port. It's just, just within a couple of hundred meters. Yeah. Staying together for um, one and a half hour in the race and then suddenly within a couple of hundred meters it's a gap of yeah, 50 meters or so. So Fayesh hunting down his compatriot. Shilostenko still out in fourth place at the back there and past us in commentary now is Sletcho on the other side of the river. So she's in Fifth place in the women's, I think, unless yeah. we miss someone go through. I don't think so. So that that race is really spread out. Yes. I think there must have been quite a few retirements as well. Yeah, I must have. Most of them are probably doing uh, K1 seniors as well. Or K2 so seniors as well. Yeah, K2 and 
so when they see the medals are safe with the three on top they retire rather than struggling through the race to save some strength for Friday, Saturday and Sunday races especially, especially Saturday and Sunday for these girls and maybe this afternoon short track as well yeah, this afternoon yeah so around the top turn Shimon followed by Fayesh once again double hungry got very big behind from Fayesh back to Silva Silva really has lost contact with these two now Beautiful technique, this guy. Using the full length of his body. He actually looks a lot tidier than the yeah. Shimon at the front. Shimon looks very powerful. Powerfully built guy. Silver now really looking at third place. Yeah, Shimon absolutely tore that race apart in that over that portage. Now the gaps are huge. It's going to be single file around the final lap. So one more portage for the C1s. So I think there's only six women left out there, Slipper. Yes. Well, this is, no, they're finishing, sorry. So my lap counting as good as normal. Yeah. And this is actually it for these guys. So they've done their last portage. It's Shimon across the line. Gold medal to Hungary by Sebastian Shimon. After his marvelous uh, final portage. European champion C1 men juniors uh, Sebastian Simon from Hungary and silver also to Hungary by Daniel Fayesh. Double Hungary as we saw in the ladies K1 earlier today. Something we have been quite used to recently. Well, were, in, the, in the junior women's C1, they were nowhere. Yeah. So they're not totally invulnerable, Stefan. We, no. So here come senior women through for their final portage. Everything to play for here. Alex Lane is running. She's running like she's stolen yeah, well, something. While the bronze medal goes to. Uh, Let's see the women getting into the portage, in from their portage. And the bronze medal to Portugal by Duarte Silva. And in come the women. 
So it didn't capitalise quite on the great running. Oh, they're all back in together. Quite slow jump in from all of them, actually. And they're all the way together. So it was a good effort from Alex Lane on the porters. Tried to run them down. So now we will see tactics during the last thousand meters. So now it's a case of picking. If you don't think you can win, it's a case of picking the lead, the person who is yes. going to win and sitting with them and hoping that you can pick something off in the closing stages. So they all came into the portage together. It's a shame we didn't see the, the sprint into the portage. You could have got some idea. And fourth in um, C1 men was Jaroslav Shelestenko from Spain. A great race from him, falling off the big group in the early stages of the race and now uh, finalising fourth. Just 800 metres more, more to go. The three in top in the ladies K1. So, one more turn, and then a race back to the finish line for these ladies. It's very hard judging pace when there's three of you like this, how hard you can get away with working. You need to work hard enough. So the others aren't resting, but not too hard so that you get tired. It's a horrible, horrible balance of what you want to do, what the others can do, what you think the others can do. I think Sophia Vörös, uh, Shalai Vörös, uh, looks uh, very comfortable. She, she's in the lead now. She has uh, been looking quite relaxed all, all through the race. Yeah, but then Horvath has come into the yes. porches first. Yes. On most of them, we didn't see the last one very well. <coughs> so it's uh, it's going to be interesting. So last turn. So Sophia just picking up the pace to go around the turn. As the next C1 crosses the line in front of us. It's Poland She's Pietrovic, but round the turn. It's She's leaving Boris. good room for her teammate. <coughs> Beautifully done. Would you have done that? Left enough room. Depends <laughs> who my teammate was. <laughs> we, we all have teammates and teammates, yeah. Stefan. <laughs> and medals and medals. So, it's, uh... So here we go. She's not looking too fresh. Shall I Vorosh there? It's going to be a long run in for these three. And now the adrenaline is pumping. They are trying to build up strength both mentally and uh, physically for the sprint. Second Spaniard just across the line in the C1, David Blanco. Now finishing sixth, I think. So the three ladies are safely round the turn. 400 meters to go now. Okay, it could be Alex Lane having a pop at it here. And straight back onto the wash. The door was closed on her by Cello Vorosh there. Alex had a little go, a little tester. Vorosh responded. But it's still uh, 400 meters to go. Testing each other a little bit. It's too early to make a big effort yet. And there goes Horvath. It's Horvath's shot at it. Is he coming past Chile? 
And this is going to be tough for Alex Lane because he's going to end up second wash out. The very, it's very brave very move. Tough. Yeah, very brave move from Horvat. It's still 300 meters to go. Oh, she's done a good yeah, job of it. Yeah, absolutely. She's done, it. she's done it. That's right. Impressive from her. John Ivoros just holding Alex Lane out, going out to the left to make it more difficult for her to come round. It's the right thing to do. It's a bit harsh, but she can just stay on the wash from Horvath there as they come into the finish funnel. European champion uh, under 23 women is Noemi Horvath, Hungary. And silver also to Hungary by Sofia Silai Voros and bronze to Alex Lane from Great Britain. Good race from her. Really good race from her. Sit with her and watch some of that video next week, though, Stefan. Smiles all around. Everyone seems pretty happy with their result there. Working well together, all three of them. Overhead shot from the camera. As they separate. So a very impressive finish there from Horvath. Absolutely so. Let's see if I can get get some interviews from them. So as they get out, the boats will be weighed and measured. Minimum weight eight kilos without all their drinks and stuff in it. And if they bother measuring the length. Probably just wait, they're interested in. Fans are building up. Car park's filling up. So, not surprisingly, a good afternoon for Hungary. Four medals from four. They had two from four this morning. Oh, one of the volunteers trying his luck, trying to get the shirt. A shirt swap there, Stefan. He was shut down in his tracks. She wasn't having any of that. So across the line, Aquero from Spain didn't have the day she wanted, but stuck to her task admirably. And seems reasonably pleased with her day at the office as well. So good work from her. Patriot Alvarez is going to make her way down from the bridge. About three minutes, four minutes of them down there. Not looking like she's enjoying herself too much. She'll be glad when this is over. So the wind just dying down slightly now. Sunshine's coming out. So it's going to be a lovely, lovely afternoon here.
So the women's race kind of disintegrated after the first turn. A little incident on the first turn. Broke up the group early. Front four got away. Broke it down to three later on. And fairly straightforward. Just going into the turn there. And a sled joke. She's in sixth place. Good distance down on the winners. Just made contact with the front group for the first couple of laps. And then life got very hard. Hungarian dominance continues. And there's still some big names to come from the Hungarian team. Just taking a selfie with the glamorous team next door. And Jim. <laughs> Jim's, Jim's milking it now. <laughs> so, a few shots from the crowd. There's quite a lot of people building up in and around the course. And if we wrap up the tail enders, we will move on this afternoon at 2.45 to the K1 men juniors. Big field in the K1 men juniors. They'll be out on the course on their own. Field of 21. And then it's on to short races, short courses for the afternoon. I, for one, haven't ever seen that live, so it's going to be interesting to see how that all pans out. So I'm standing here with the, the three medalists from the ladies, uh, the women uh, under 20T K1 race. It was a really, really interesting race and you stayed well together. Did you work together all through the race uh, on purpose? Oh, yeah. When I saw that we are there, there's only the three of us, I saw that, yeah, it's better to do it together. And then uh, I was hoping that we can uh, decide at the very end <laughs> who, is, who will win. Were you sure of winning uh, already when you decided that? <laughs> no, of course not. I, I didn't even believe till the very last meter that I will win. <laughs> and uh, Alex, uh, how, how was it to compete two Hungarians? Um, a bit outnumbered, but it was good fun. Like They worked together and yeah, it was great to be up in the front group with them. So yeah. Uh, did you expect to have a medal today? Not particularly, just worked hard and hoped that it paid off. So, yeah, pleased to come away with a podium. <laughs> and you did. Uh, and um, yeah, the bronze medalist, uh, how, how was the race for you? I am the silver medalist. Sorry. It was a really tough race. I tried to take the goal, but Naomi was faster than me, but I really tried it. It was good. <laughs> you looked very strong uh, over the race and did uh, lo lo a lot of ho hard work. Did you um, plan to do that? Yeah, so it was planned, but the hard work always pays off. <laughs> hard work always pays off. I c can't agree more on that. Um, 
So congratulations. And uh, do, do you do more uh, races uh, di over this weekend? Yes, I will do the short race in the afternoon. So <laughs> it will be very interesting. <laughs> Are you also doing the short race, Alex? Uh, not the short race, but K2 on Sunday. And, and you? No, that was all for today. <laughs> and for the race. <laughs> congratulations once again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So good work from Stefan there, promoting uh, Great Britain to a silver medal. But, uh, good interviews and a good, good attitude from the girls there as well. They worked together, acknowledged the fact that hard work was a big part of the deal. And, uh, and rightly so, the winner didn't know she was going to win until the last metres. And I think that's fairly... A fairly uh, realistic view of how racing pans out often. So that's it for that session. And we will join you again at 2.45 for, uh, for 4.45 for the men's. Great highlights there from the team. Summed up the race beautifully, summed up the excitement. And we will be back at 2.45 for the junior men's K1, in which we've got 21 entries, and they're gonna do 22 and a half K. See you later. Thanks for your attendance this morning. Hopefully you'll be back later. Cheers, bye.
Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas na categoria K1 Feminino Sub-23 vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal presentation for K1 Women Under 23 will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos as medalhadas do K1 Feminino Sub-23. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal presentation for the women's K1 Under-23. As medalhas serão entregues por André e Elenc, vice-presidente da Associação Europeia de Canoagem, acompanhado pelo team leader húngaro Robert Weiss. The medals will be presented by Andre Jelenk, the Vice President of the European Canoe Association, accompanied by the Hungarian team manager Robert Weiss. A medalhada de bronze, Alex Lane. Bronze medal, Alex Lane, Great Britain. The silver medal for Hungary. A medalhada de prata da Hungria, Sofia Zelaivoros. And the gold medal and European champion from Hungary. A medalhada de ouro e campeã de Europa da Hungria, Noemi Orvar. Por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Hungria. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Hungary. Parabéns, meninas. Pedimos o vosso aplauso às medalhadas do Campeonato de Europa de Maratona 2017. Congratulations, ladies, and now the time for those all-important photographs.
é tempo das selfies para mais tarde recordar. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. Muito obrigada pela vossa presença. Estamos de regresso às 14h45 para assistir à competição na categoria K1 Júnior Masculino. Senhoras e senhores, a cerimónia de entrega de medalhas na categoria C1 Júnior Masculino vai começar. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal presentation for C1 Men Juniors will begin. Senhoras e senhores, apresentamos os medalhados do C1 Júnior Masculino. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal presentation for the C1 Junior Men. As medalhas serão entregues por Ricardo Machado, vice-presidente da Federação Portuguesa de Canoagem, acompanhado pelo team leader da equipa húngara, Robert Weiss. The medals will be presented by Ricardo Machado, the Vice President of the Portuguese Canoe Federation, accompanied by the team manager from Hungary, Robert Weiss. O medalhado de bronze. The bronze medal for Portugal. Duarte Silva. Silver medal for Hungary. Daniel Fez. Oh. 
and the gold medal and European champion from Hungary. O medalhado de ouro e campeão de Europa em C1 Júnior masculino da Hungria, Sebastian Simon. Senhoras e senhores, por favor, levantem-se para escutar o hino nacional da Hungria. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the national anthem of Hungary? Muito bem, peço um forte aplauso para os medalhados do Campeonato de Europa de Maratona 2017. Ora, congratulations, gentlemen. É tempo de uh, descontrair, tirar uh, as fotografias desta passagem pelo Campeonato uh, de Europa de Maratonas. Vamos entrar. Vamos entrar no período de almoço e regressamos às 14h45 para assistir à competição na categoria K1 Júnior Masculino. Até já! Thank you very much everybody. That concludes the morning's racing and we look forward to seeing you back here for race number five at 14.45, that's the junior men's K1.